call Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Call no, out. No, 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 but like, what do you No, did call the like, f out. He hates women, I think. Go ahead, sorry. Actually, I'm gonna expose you right now, live on stream. Because I don't think you, Aaron, in particular, realize how your messaging comes across to most minorities. And most minorities hearing your kind of messaging. And I think this is actually why I think the right wins on a lot of cultural war issues and gaining ground in regards to minority voting. Is that your uh, particular take uh, takes away a lot of the Excusing agency. Excusing all of these people, right? Okay, all right. You gonna just cut me off? Uh oh. Yes, because I, I think I know. Okay, here we go. Here we go. This is the benevolent uh, racism. Oh, oh! yes, yeah, benevolent, benevolent racism of, incoming. They will cut off the job. No, 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 no. Say, say what you're gonna say. No, say what no, you're gonna say. No, no honestly, honestly, bro, bro, these kind of conversations are so unpleasant. Like these are definitely the worst people on the political spectrum. And every time we should I talk be having to them. them. No, let let him finish. No, you can have your circle jerk with three white women talk about racism, and I'll leave you enjoy it. No. Cheers. No. Misogyny on Twitch. Yeah, great. What about it? Or I guess on, on the internet. Yeah. It's a little bit of a thing. A little bit. Like, would um, that convo the other night, that the huge panel triggering the f*** out of me. The convo the other night. Are you talking about our wonderful black lady who hates black men convo, or? Uh, no, obviously she was based. Um, <laughs> okay. I'm talking about the other one. The It was like the Orbiter one. Huge. It had like Wicked Supreme and Lav and like t tons of people. It was right after the, the Mr. Girl breakup. Um, oh, is this where Lav was trying to fight with like Cherry and Brittany or whatever? No, it was before that, actually. Okay, I've had a lot of combos on here recently. You're gonna have to refresh my memory. Well, I don't f***ing know. That's not important. It was just some combo okay, right yeah, before that. It? I'm telling you, it was right after the Max convo. Okay, well, I like, believe in you. You guys were talking about, like, misogyny. And this, I, I see the same shit happen mm -hmm. with race, and I see it happen with misogyny. Um, if you ask, like, 1,000 people, I think, like, 990 of them would say, like, uh, if you ask them, like, is there misogyny online? They would be like, oh, yeah, of course, like women face a disproportionate amount of like harassment and all of that shit online. It's 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 bad. Um, and then you try to point to like discrete examples of that happening. And all of a sudden it's like, well, was that really sexist? Was that really like, you know, had to do with racism or sexism? Mm -hmm. Like they'll acknowledge that it's this like widespread thing. And yet nobody ever seems to see it happening. Well, that sounds pretty like dumb. like. Wicked Supreme did it to like to a T. Ooh, call Absolutely. out, call Absolutely. out. No, 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 but like, what he no, did call is, the like, f out. Banal. He hates women. I think. Go ahead. Sorry. No, the the problem is that he, I think he's pretty good about trying to like act actively identify like um, sexist blind spots or like misogynistic blind spots that he has. So he's being too charitable to people who really are just being misogynistic to other people. Um, because he's like, Lav, people don't hate you because you're a woman. They hate you because X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. um, they hate you because you were like preaching feminism. You were saying like the only reason anybody hates you is because you're a woman, but it's not true. It's because like you're hypocritical and your ideas are like half baked. Okay, base. You know, and then he moved like the point that he moves on to to support his argument is he's like, how can DGG be sexist or when they like not so erudite? She's like universally beloved, okay, and it's that's like kind that's, of a dumb point. Yeah, that, that's a point literally like in Lav's favor. <laughs> um, and Lav didn't have like the. She was trying to grasp at like the frustration of like the model minority. Have you ever heard of this? Yeah, Chinese people get accused of this a lot, or used to. Yeah, Asian used to. Uh, I haven't heard this argument brought up by conservatives much recently, but it used to be the case that like Chinese people would always be pointed to as like the model minority, um, model minority, right? Like if Chinese people can come to the United States and succeed so well, there must not be racism because they're a minority and they do really well. So they're kind of held up as this exemplary example um, in order to prove that like racism doesn't exist. Yeah. But there are like other okay. like factors that make it that so that they're so successful in the United States. So. Gotcha. Yeah. I think you're right. I think that there is like a uh, lot of... Uh, I know that I'm right. <laughs> I don't ever need you to say, I think you're right, but sorry, go ahead. All right, chill. I think you're only looking at it from one perspective, which is like the in-group, out-group dynamic. And it's definitely, that's one way to look at it. But I think Lab was trying to come at it from like the in-group, in-group perspective of like, what is it like if you're an Asian person or um, a black man? And 
somebody is saying like, okay, well, I'm going to run with like the black, black person example. Okay. If somebody in your community is like, yo, I think I catch a lot of um, undue racism and Wicked Supreme had been like, like Jamal, you're not facing racism because look at Tyrone. Everybody loves Tyrone. And Tyrone is like this person with like a PhD, um, super charismatic, like has un- like embodies universally beloved um, and admired traits uh-huh. that kind of transcend gender norms. Yeah. And he's like, how can that be the, ca- the case that there's like racism uh-huh. when everybody loves Tyrone, you know? Yeah. That's exactly what she was doing. And then Eridite, um, I think, kind of felt like she was, she took particular to- offense to what Lav had said. Well, of course, she was right? calling her a pick me. Right. Because again, like it came off like she was calling her a pick me. Well, not only just um, a pick me, but it also can probably feel like pretty discrediting because it's like, oh, people just like me. Yeah. Well, I guess, yeah, kind of like because I'm a pick me minority. Right. Um, yeah. And, you know, Erudite was like defending herself, saying like you're downplaying like all of the hard work that I've put into this and you didn't see like, mm-hmm. you know, the misogyny that I face, which is all absolutely true. Um, that's why. It's not Wicked Supreme bringing up Erudite. You know, she's like this exemplar for other female orbiters um, to follow. And it was kind of being like weaponized against Lav. And everyone was just like, no, you're crazy. I don't think it was being weaponized, but I think that... So this is something that I... This is, It's very complicated to talk around this. But like, imagine if a black guy were to rob a store and then like kill a kid. And then his excuse was, well, you know streets are rough and this is my lot in life what am i going to do right now let's say we've got a form of people and they're saying i don't think it's acceptable when you come from bad backgrounds to like blame where you're coming from um that's why i hope that this n-word goes to jail for life it's really hard now there's valid criticism in that comment but there's also a lot of racism in that comment and it's hard when both things exist to separate the two from each other So for Lav, I think it's really difficult because I do think there is, just by virtue of my community being 95% men, I think there is a decent amount of like... Wait, your your community is 95% men? Probably. No. No. No, I don't believe it. That's that's crazy. Well, it's probably like legitimately like 92, 93%. Yeah, of course. What do you mean? Wait, are you being sarcastic right now? No, I'm being completely serious. Okay, hey, stop! You need to use more inflection in your voice when you're going to be sarcastic because you always talk like this, so I can't really tell when you're being sarcastic or not. Okay, so inflect. All right. Number I one. I have the like perpetual Daria voice. I'm sorry. Well, don't. Inflect more, okay? Anyway. Um, Are you holding me to a different standard because I'm a woman? No. If you were a guy and you were talking like this, I'd also be critical. Um, sure. Yeah, you'd be saying, be more expressive. Smile more, baby. You'd be that, saying, I didn't say that at all. Whoa! <laughs> You're projecting now, okay? Okay, sure. But continue on with your anyway with your um, analogy. Yeah, there, there's so like when I look at like Britney, I think that Britney got a lot of hate, and I think a lot of it was like sexist related. There is no reason for them to f-ing hate Britney that badly. Um, it's just it's just not. There's no excuse. I don't believe it. But um, but love that but yeah Let's but. Uh, Lav got a lot of hate, and I think there was I think there was a good amount of it that was sexism, but there's also a lot of legitimate reasons why I could see people really don't like Lav. So it's hard um, to separate those things from each other, right? Yeah. I agree. Duh. I think I think this is um, like bringing up Britney's misogyny is great because I think the the like the the misogyny that she faced specifically in the community because that's something that you can point to to show like, hey, this is what misogyny looks like. Mm -hmm. Um, And it has less to do with anything that's being set, any criticism that's levied at any of these women. It's more to do with like the frequency I've noticed is that like they f*** up and people want to burn them at the stake. You know, like they're they're on trial. Yeah, they're really vitriolic with how they phrase things. And it's like, holy Like you must answer to me why you did this. And I'm like, okay, yeah, they f***ed up. But seriously, if this were a dude, like you wouldn't have given it like a second thought. But people are like, this woman must pay. She must atone for her sins. Like, how she she can't just get away with it. Like, even this, uh, what was her name? It was Annalisa or, like, Anissa. I can't remember the name of the woman that you had on the black woman. Yeah. The female dating strategy poster. Okay. Um, like, the, the way that people in the sub were, like, criticizing her. One, they came for her intelligence, which, again, it's not for lack of intelligence that she's as reactionary as she is. There's plenty of, like, intelligent reactionaries. Um, look at Clarence Thomas. Mm-hmm. Uh but well okay time about a time oh, you, 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 
You want to go into that? <laughs> no, go ahead. But um, no, yeah, I understand. Calling her stupid is dumb. But I, but also people will call somebody stupid colloquially because they disagree with their opinions or whatever and things. But sure. But um, but no, I, I understand. I do agree. Yeah, I think that some of that was a little over the top. But yeah, go ahead. But well, I, I, I think the problem with misogyny is that so many people spend so much time trying to tell people like what's not misogynistic like hey in lab's case that's not misogyny it's this other thing it's this critique of another thing but they never actually go on to point to what is misogynistic to me it's like if, if you were parenting and you only ever uh praised your child like that would be bad parenting you know yeah like you you never told them you never scolded them you only ever praised them like mm -hmm. when they did something right yeah, but that's they're never I gonna know what my what's audience wrong. so much because i need to hear it yeah <laughs> i know what you mean <laughs> And if I asked someone like Wicked Supreme, like if, you know, he was like, uh, like, again, I don't know enough of his content, so maybe he wouldn't consistently deny it, but I would just be interested to know, um, like, what could you point to Wicked that would be, that would rise to the level of misogyny? Because I think for some people, unless it's getting to the point of like calling a woman like a femoid or like some creepy like coomer shit, mm -hmm. they really don't consider that to be misogyny. But I'm like, it's, it's, it is <laughs> a lot of it's informed by it. Sure. It's probably just, it's a little bit challenging to figure it out too, because at some point it starts to feel like people are using the misogyny as an excuse to kind of be a shitty person and not do anything as well, which is probably frustrating for some people to see happen. True. Like the, the problem with the model minority and like the frustration of it is that in like Wicked's case, he almost seemed to be suggesting that like any misogyny online, no matter how entrenched could be overcome just by working hard, being likable and like not causing trouble, you know? He might have implied that, but I don't think he believes that. I, I, in fact, I'm almost positive he would fight against that. He'd be like, of course, that's not true. No, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, keep, um, they use these examples, but and that's why it's incongruent with their character because they're not like that. You know, like, like you said, like they wouldn't agree with it, but like they're making arguments for it nonetheless, whether they realize it or not. Kind of similar with, with the racism thing. Like, nobody, um, like racist as it is, is, is way more useful as like a noun, as an adjective than a noun. Um, so when someone's being like misogynistic, it's usually not that like, I don't think Wicked himself is a misogynist, yeah. you know? It's but kind of like, like um, oh, okay. oh, no, go for it. I was going to say, it reminds me a lot of, have you ever heard of like, there's different types of misogyny. I think there are, I want to say there are like three broadly recognized categories. I feel like I read this in a sociology book or some shit, but you've got like the normal, like, I fucking hate you misogyny. And then you've got something called, have you ever heard of benevolent misogyny? Oh yeah, benevolent sexism. Yeah, like, I feel me... like that's what I got. Um... <clears throat> That's just because you're a weak person. People feel like they need to help you. Uh, but no, but that's like the, let me help you with that because I know you can't deal with that because you're a woman. And it's like, and then, but it's hard to call people out on that because it's like, well, are you misogynistic? No, of course not. I love women. That's why I'm trying to help them all the time because I know they're not capable of doing things on their own, right? It, it's kind of that weird, yeah, benevolent sex. Well. And there's a third one too, but I forgot. But um, yeah, it's hard for them to, it's hard for people to see all the different types or sometimes people will but be sexism, doing- sexism, don't you, know, you just mean w woman privilege? Yeah, or like hating women or something, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. Anything else? I think like well, that's that was the difference that I got because like I caught um, there there was benevolent sexism, there there was misogyny and and everything and all of it. Okay, like if you go back and and read the chat, read DGG chat, read YouTube chat, and the live replay for your vod for the change my mind event. If you didn't know what was on the screen, I think just looking at the chat, you would think that I walked onto the screen, uh, removed my dress, and wrote um, like fuck me on my chest based off of like what people were writing. I'm serious and started talking to you. Jesus. Because a lot of it were like sexual comments and stuff like that. Um, and I, I get it like on, in DGG or whatever, like they're joking about you and the harem and the coomer shit. Um, but even in YouTube chat, which again is like a little bit more removed, it's a newer audience for you. Like the, the same comments were, were there. Um, yeah, that's what they do. I think we considered banning like the coomer emote. Uh, but yeah, one of the things that I said before was that like, I think that, I think that all comments about a person's appearance should probably be banned unless it's like relevant to the conversation. Like if, like if a model wants to come on and talk about something, then maybe like, yeah. But for women, you it's have a lot of... of models hitting you up to come talk to you while you play Factorio. Yeah, I do actually. Why does that upset you? I, I figured. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I love it. I love that for them. I love that for you. Oh, I think cool. it's good stream content. Thank you. It is good stream content when it happens. Um, mm -hmm. uh, sorry. As opposed to rudely cut me off mm -hmm. um yeah but oh yeah there's just there's just probably no reason to ever be commenting on a woman's appearance like when she's on stream it's just kind of weird even even if they're like nice comments um it's just like weird like back when lauren southern was on a lot people would be saying shit like oh like you know 
I don't really like her opinions very much, but God, she's so fucking hot. I want to make white nationalist babies with her. And it's like, bro, what the fuck? Yes. Um, yeah, you'd see like comments like that a ton, and it's like, okay, well, that's kind of fucking weird. Uh, yeah. A weird is one way to describe that, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, like, weird. It, it, it's pretty it's, weird. It's uh, a little bit further than that, but yeah. Uh, I, I think, you know, it contributes to this. Like, what what is the context of men and women interacting online for the most part, if you had to guess? Comer shit. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Like, like porn I, and um, shit like that, yeah. Wait, no, no, no. I, like, on your stream. Okay, like, what's the context of you interacting with women? Um, for me, it's having a great many number of conversations about them and with them about high, highly intellectual things, but, you know, that's just me. Yeah, that's you personally. So what's an example of, like, um, you know, like a highly intellectual conversation you might have with one of these women? Well, not to brag, but I did just have an aerospace engineer on, and, uh, you know, we talked a little bit, uh, chop shop. Yeah, she was about, a socialist. Yeah, kind of cringe. Yikes. We don't kind talk about all... that. We don't talk about oh, that. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, I had one woman on that was really smart that talked about homeschooling experiences before. Um, I've, I've had all sorts of women on. Just depends on what the topics are. Yeah, binders full of women. You, you got them, Literally, right? binders full. Yes. True. That's what I figured. Yeah. Um, I think this ever this is kind of like a meme at this point to like throw this out as some sort of like meaningful litmus test, like the, the Bechdel test or the Bechdel test. <laughs> Dude, I passed that. I just had fucking lab fighting with like two other women all on their own. None of them referencing. All right, me. chill. Yeah. That well, is a pass. So before you start Be hold yourself, on, it was lab like, versus how you're, you're platforming and boosting, you know, POC and women. Okay, you having like an, a public mud fight between three, like, you know, a groiper and like two or three other women or whatever, that's not like, you know, positive female representation. You can call it what you want, but it passes that Bichelle test or whatever the fuck, 100% with flying colors, so. Yeah, because they, they were arguing about sex work. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> hey, a pass the pass. No, no, that's what I'm saying. It's like, a, it's a stupid litmus test because it's literally like the bare minimum, right? Sure. Even the, the, the woman who like came up with it, she says like my favorite movie like fails the Bechdel test. I can't no, yeah, I know. It. it was just supposed to be like a quick, like kind of like dirty, like napkin math to kind of like check something. And like, if you see that like 98% of movies fail it, maybe that kind of says something, but you shouldn't be writing movies explicitly to pass that. And now they're not magically sexist. Oh, tomorrow. I know that, that yeah. shit is cringe. Like yeah. if you go to Comic-Con and stuff like that, there's directors unironically bragging about the fact that like this movie passes the Bechdel test. And it's like, you do realize that's like the bare minimum. That's what she was getting at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's stupid. it's not like, you know, you're passing like the SAT with flying colors. You're mm -hmm. literally like the bar is in hell. That's what you're saying. But I like that's one of the reasons why I super like that Anna girl coming on yesterday, because she filled out like a lot of traditionally masculine things like she was racist, arguably bigoted, um, very True. aggressive. She was like <laughs> arguing with like facts and logic against people that were trying to be like personal and snowflakey. Like I like that, um, even if she might have been kind of a sort of evil person or kind of a mean person. Um, mm -hmm. So I like that she was there to argue about it because it's good to have like because i don't want just no offense god it sounds so horrible to say this but i don't want just like oh well i want positive female representation so here are 52 different erudites that i'm going to bring on stream like women that are pretty that are educated that are going to be very nice to you and are going to talk kindly about men's issues like i want to bring yeah, on women the that diversity are... has to range from fuentes all the way to annalisa or yes her name was. true yes because that's what i want because women have a diversity of thought and we should be able to bring a woman on and call her a fucking crazy insane person and it has something to do with her being a woman she's just yeah, like a white nationalist women's or something. Women's wrongs. exactly true yeah so yeah, I like the Annalisa person or the Anna Alicia person because she, <laughs> I think she did a good job at feeling out. I think they call it like, it's called like rainbow capitalism, right? Well, I, like, I think this strain to me is like, is like rainbow fascism. It's like the new Milo. I think rainbow capitalism more specifically refers to like capitalist companies that are showing their support for a certain issue, but they're only doing it like to make money. And so it's like quote unquote rainbow capitalism, you know? Uh, didn't she say that she was like, maybe I should grift at the end? Am I crazy? I could be <laughs> she misread. did say that. No, she did say that. Or, okay, so tell me that, that's not some like rainbow fascism right there. That could be, kind of, yeah. She could start like a revolution. <laughs> there, there are so many um, women, like female posters like that. It's kind of like, I hate to um, just say it's not like, there. it's not two sides of the same coin. Seriously, anybody who's trying to compare like a fem cell, quote unquote, to an incel, like that tells me you were never on an incel forum if you really think that there's any comparison to be had because like subs like r slash, you know, female dating strategy, um, not great, pretty reactionary. And a lot of the things that they advocate for, whether they realize it or not, uphold the same oppressive gender norms that they're complaining about actively in the sub. Um, but it's, but. it's, like the fem cell, it's like it's more of like a vibe, you know, like incel, like those men, those boys, 
are truly involuntarily celibate in in the truest sense of the word and um they're lonely and, and, and stuff they don't interact with women they don't go outside but look at her you know she had like to me fem cell energy but i know that that woman has a man <laughs> i'm positive well I, hold I on careful i don't know if that's true woman. because some people were saying she's a single mom so who knows I don't know if that's true. Or well, not. I don't want to speculate too far beyond that, yeah, but well, I only you just that speculated, you, so careful. But go what, ahead. No, no, no. It, you guys went into that part of the conversation. Like somebody asked her. I don't know if it was you or if it was Abba, like mm -hmm. or forethought. I have no. Someone asked her, like, um, do you have a partner or a boyfriend or something like that? And she became very evasive. Yeah. Um, which that doesn't necessarily mean that she does, but she she became evasive in a way that suggested to me that she does. Well, careful. The reason why she specifically became evasive is because her claim was that when you start talking to black men about their failures as a black woman, that the only thing the black men always do is they try to say like, oh, honey, like, are you dating anybody? Are you lonely? Are you resentful? Is that your problem? Is, has, did a guy hurt you? Like, that's what they were saying. That's why when people started asking about her relationship status, she like lost it because she told me earlier in our conversation that was her prediction. Well, this is what they're going to try to do. So when a couple black men came on and started asking her questions like that, yeah, she got like hyper triggered and she didn't want to answer. Yeah. For her own sake. Plus, it's like, I mean, you were saying that nobody should be commenting on their appearance like that. Plus the probing into her personal life is is pretty irrelevant i know that I, it just felt like they were trying to get whoever asked her was trying to get a gotcha on her like oh you criticize black men yet you might be dating one or something like that because i think what what was going to follow from that question is that if she said yes they were going to be like well are you dating a black man you know as if that's some that's some argument against, against what she well, was I saying think, a, i think what they were it. looking for was if she was single because if, if she was single they were going to say oh well you're just bitter i think that's what the that was the gotcha they were looking for because she um, sounds I mean, like a do you think that's true <laughs> that she's bitter um yeah but if, do people really think that that's where all of that animosity towards black men comes from yeah well yes that well that's what her prediction is that's what her lived experience was or at least how she said that whenever she talks to black men they do everything they can to avoid responsibility and so when you start talking to them all they're going to ask you is like oh baby did somebody hurt you like oh why are you so bitter why are you hurting your own why are you against us blah 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 and that when that slick or slade guy or whatever came on i don't remember or mm -hmm. I don't remember his name. Um, when he came on, though, um, that's, the no jumper guy. Yeah, he, that it, the conversation got there in like five seconds with him, where he's saying like, "Are you single, baby? Like, do you have anybody?" Like, um, yeah. So that <laughs> probably like reinforced her. Oh, sharp. That probably reinforced her opinion of that like hardcore. Sharp. Um, I know, but that's like that's completely irrational. One and two. Wait, what part of I that is completely irrational? Like to to base your opinion off of an entire demographic of people based off of just like one or two negative interactions. Again, this is literally oh. I think some incel logic of like a, a woman well, cheated on me once when I was twenty one. Now all women are whores. It's like irrational insofar as rationality is concerned, but it's very human, right? You only need like one or two bad experiences with a certain group of people to like stereotype. Them. Yeah, you always say like three, right? Well, not yeah, like one or two. Or, yeah, three. Yeah, we'll definitely do it. Yeah, well, you'll just start like classifying right. a whole group. It's, of people. Well, it's an explanation, but I'm just saying it's not a justification. Um, no, yeah, it's just explaining the feelings. It's not that's it shouldn't be that way, but it just kind of is. Yeah. I think just on, online in general, there's just like less wiggle room um, for women to like navigate these spaces. Like they were talking about in that combo, I keep referencing is like the the acceptable range of behavior. That's why, like again, Wicked holding up erudite as some like beacon of hope for DGG and like online misogyny decreasing overall. It's like no, look at what you have to do to be successful as a political. Uh, streamer, you literally have to be as gorgeous as Kyla. You have to be super well spoken. You have to be charismatic. She has like a degree, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be all of those things to even get a chance. And that's because I don't even know what her viewership is. I just know about her appearances or like her appearances on your channel and stuff. Sure. Um, how do you feel about? <laughs> Why the hell are you laughing so much? Because uh, this is a this is a complicated one. How do you feel about people like Denims? Who are? Do you know any? Do you know who Denims is? I am aware of who Denims is. Yes. So Denims did or does like political kind of commentary or whatever, um, and that was her bread and butter content. How do you feel about people like that that do that going into stuff like Fansly and Fanhouse and stuff? Uh, it's based. I'm here for the like bimbo leftist bimbo politics, and I'm using bimbo not in a pejorative sense, like literally sure. like in a. But do you in, worry in that that might like world. reinforce? And no, you... this is this is this is what I'm saying with the model minority shit. Is like Lav should be able to come on stream, and as people characterize it, even though I disagree with it because I think Lav is very smart, um, like schizo post, quote unquote, and not get shit for her gender. You know, Sneeko does it. I don't see anybody coming for like nobody ever says Sneeko's stupid because he's a man. 
Yeah, I say this all the time. Like um, that's why it's like wicked looking at. Um, you can't look look to Kyla to gauge misogyny online. You need to look at like the dissidents of this space. All right, you need to look at the schizo posters. You need to look at um, or women who are engaging in in sex work like denims to see how are. People be careful, careful, careful! Them. I don't want to call it sex work. Be careful. <laughs> but oh wait, I don't know what she does. I thought you were implying that she does. She started know, like, a, it, like yeah, that. it's like a lewds account basically. So yeah. Weren't you telling Lab that like? Ludes is, is sex work? I Ludes don't online? No, if I would ever say that. But Lab doesn't post Ludes. Lads post, Lab posts nudes. Gotcha. Well, I mean, what do you think? Do you think that's bad for women, TM? What Denims is up to? Um, It sucks, but yeah, I kind of do think it is. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Why? Um, I think that there's like a strong messaging that happens where if you're a woman and you're doing stuff online and they always end up gravitating towards like sexy work. It kind of sets that expectation. And that's something that like every other woman on the platform kind of has to deal with. I think that's like unfortunate. All right, so I have two huge issues with this. Go and it's, it. and I'm, I, I, I fall victim to this too. Do you know who Bella Porch is? Nope. Um, she's a big TikToker. I'm sure you know who Belle Delphine is then, right? Uh, yeah, pedophile babe, okay. yeah. Yes, precisely. Okay, the thing is, is that I have, <laughs> My problems with these with these women, right? Um, because of their particular brands of deviancy, mm -hmm. like what I when I see their content, I feel like they're pandering to the worst common, like the worst the worst groups, you know. Well, how um, is what how is so like for the denim stuff? How does that not count as pandering to you? Well, hold on, let me let me finish my point. It's okay. it's not just that they're I and laugh falls into this trap too. Is like. She starts off as being like broadly anti-sex work industry, which is cool. That's base. There's a lot of problems in that industry and they should be reformed. But then she starts to levy her attacks at these like individual women, these individual sex workers. And it's like, well, now you're criticizing like some of the most vulnerable people who are who are victims falling victim the to industry. the same system. Yeah. And you're you're saying that like it's their fault. You know, you're scapegoating them. And it's like, can't you have a little compassion? For them because they have you know they're, they're facing all the same shit that you are and to me it's, it's less fruitful to go after the bella porches or or belle delphine because what i'm really that's just a symptom right like what i'm really upset about and what's really frustrating is like a culture that would kind of incentivize that behavior no nah, i disagree i think that it's okay to feel bad for the people that are truly taken advantage of but there's a certain this is like the um oh well you're saying since i'm participating in capitalism i can't critique it um, it depends on your participation. If your participation is like, you're like a steel worker earning like 45 or 50,000 a year, then like you're probably beyond reproach. Like I'm not gonna shit on you for participating in capitalism. But if you're making $5 million a year and you're signing ma major deals and shit, then yeah, there's gonna be a lot more room for criticism there. Um, like People are starting to conflate their social capital and their social cast with like an economic cast. Yeah, but I and mean, it's, well, it's, online, way that, off. well online it kind of works, right? No, because that's the thing. Is that like? Wait, are you talking? Hold on. Much... Are you gonna do the Marxian shit where you're like, well, unless you're a capital owner, you're because is that where we're going with this? Or uh, we're gonna throw in a little bit of a Marxoid analysis. Yeah, sure. Why okay, not? so Marx um, had another term, or there was another term invented later called the petite labor aristocracy. Oh, okay. The petite bourgeois. So we can call them you're, that. You're thinking you... about la labor aristocracy, not the petite bourgeois. Those are like actual like uh, small, small business owners, people who do own capital and businesses. Sure, but, labor but like, but well, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold about. on. Don't tell me what I'm talking about, you fucking child. Okay? Yeah, well, I just fucking did. Okay, no, you I think didn't. I know a little bit more the, about Marx, The petite right? bourgeois, I'm pretty sure included things like doctors and lawyers and stuff, because oftentimes they would That's kind of- That's labor aristocracy. Because they would kind of own their own practices and everything, right? Oh, well, if you're conflating people who simultaneously work at the business that they own, then yes. But if I'm talking about artists and stuff. Okay, but like, well, because streamers kind of fit into this category because you like grow out to have like, you've got people working for you. You've got like YouTube people, like you've kind of become part of that class. Like none of these like massively successful streamers are working on their own. They, they've joined this kind of like worker, uh, this like, or this like capital class, like this smaller capital class or whatever. Is that tied to anything? significant economically no again like you're saying it's, i'm saying it's a social cast but it's not an economic cast they're not okay. unionized they're independent contractors they don't own the means of production um they, they don't own okay i don't want to argue the marks the market is not that relevant I, but i i, I it's not well, fair <laughs> well well because i was just trying to explain because the social and the capital are kind of tied together like it's not fair to this, say this is where we disagree 
They're absolutely not. Okay, it's not fair to say that somebody working really high in entertainment is very, it has like a lot in common with like a normal like W-2 worker. They don't. And I never said that they did. That's why I'm saying they're labor aristocracy. Okay, sure. Whatever you want to call them. If you want to call it labor aristocracy, that's fine. But I'm, I'm just <laughs> saying that like the social and the capital are in, it, it, they're in, for the purpose of this conversation, they're fairly tied together, right? Somebody that's gone like really, really, really far socially probably has like a lot of advantages in terms of earning and everything as well. No? Oh, no, you can't use that in this context because you keep conflating um, the colloquial understanding of like to capitalize on something with like this economic term to capitalize on something. Like when these female content creators make make their um, like engage in sex work and stuff like that, they're capitalizing off of their male audience and viewership and what they expect those uh, consumers are, are are demanding from them. So in that respect, yes, again, they're, that's like social capital. They're capitalizing on that opportunity. But are they proper capitalists? No, of course not. Sure. They still yeah. we, we, work let's, and let's, like... Sure, let's eject. We don't need any of the Marxist shit. Let's eject all of that and then just tell me, get to your point, rather than arguing about the Marxist stuff. Go ahead. The only reason why I was brought up is because you said, are you going to talk about some Marxist shit? And I said, well, we can do that if you want. <laughs> Uh, because but it sounded no, like you were trying I, I to, we were trying to analyze it from like a Marxist point. But all of these things without ever bringing up or invoking. Sure. Marxism. Okay. Let's okay. Let's back back. Let's back way up. Okay. Um, I think the initial point that I was trying to get across was that if you are part of the like upper class of like content creators online, or if you're part of like the upper earning class in a capitalist society, you're not really the same as somebody that's part of the lower class, even if you all technically are part of the uh, proletariat or whatever. Because there, there's. We're saying that they're the same though. What do you mean by they're the same? No, like nobody, you're, this is like a straw man. You're saying like people are trying to conflate like some new OnlyFans uh, user with like Amaranth or something like that. And I don't think anyone's doing that. I think people can see like the clear delineations between well, sure. um, I was occupying just saying, like the top 1% yeah, of creators the versus like having nobody following you. Yeah, yet. the only reason why I was saying this is because like I think it's fair to levy criticisms at Belle Delphine for doing pedo porn because she doesn't need to. She's not like a victim of capitalism. She's like one of its like, she's thriving in it. That's what I'm saying. But like, if there was a woman that had like 100 viewers or something, or like 10 subscribers, and she did like pedo baiting, OnlyFans stuff, I probably wouldn't be as critical, or I probably wouldn't talk about that person at all. I'd probably talk more about the system. There's plenty of room to be critical of it. Like, I'm critical of it myself. And people were saying like, how can Bella Porch be pedo baiting when she's- Don't engage with those people. Don't engage. Don't. It's not worth it. But go ahead. Um, well, I just want to, if people aren't unfamiliar with the- with the content, then... No, 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 no. They are familiar, but they're brain dead. Don't ever, don't, just don't. If you want to do that, do it in your own time. It's going to drive me fucking crazy to talk to a bunch of fucking losers that all jerk off to, like, anime schoolgirls that are, like, fucking moaning with, like, four-year-old voice actors, and they're saying, well, it's actually not pedophile, but I don't want to hear it. I don't care. They're, these people are deranged. Yeah, I know. It's, it's a thousand-year-old yeah. girl meme. Yeah. I get it. it. No, it's not even that. Um, It'll be, like, an Asian schoolgirl wearing a fucking school uniform with, like, a Dora the Explorer backpack going, ah! And then people are like, well, technically she's 18. I don't, I don't want to talk to him. I don't care. So anyway, yeah. Bella Delphine, Bella Delphine is pedo bait, 100%. But that's fine. If you want pedo bait, you know, jerk off to it. I'm not judging you. Um, but anyway, okay. Anyway, about her. No, you Go. just said it's, it's not fine. That's the entire contention that you're saying. You're saying that like larger creators have a responsibility with their um, viewership and their platform to mm -hmm. kind of set the model minority to like behave better. And I'm saying that's kind of an unfair burden to place upon minorities that already catch a lot of shit. You know, like they're just trying their best to like navigate these spaces. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what ability. I that's what I disagree with. I don't think they need to try that hard. I think they've made it. I think they're at the point now where they have a responsibility to start setting a better a better example for those spaces. I think they can do Why? that. Because if you're not going to the class, the oppressor class is not going to do it. Why the fuck wouldn't they? But that gives up. That's that's the thing is that you you're almost saying that like the explanation for misogyny is that women are misbehaving and no no, know, no 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 hold on stop it's you have to shift out of the victim mentality because then nothing gets done okay i'm not saying that it's fair or that it's right but what i'm saying is that you need role models and you need leaders who are in a privileged position that can take a step forward to do things to advance like the outlooks and the, and the rights I'm, of those i'm people. talking to charles barkley i I'm, I'm actually talking to him right now i can't believe this this is amazing Okay, never mind. Because, okay, because, because, I don't think anybody should have to do anything. I, white people, yes, I love white people. White men are going to lead the world in everything, and everybody else can act however they want, and who cares? I just hope that white men fix everything. Fuck that yes. is such a I have so much agency. Like I have so much agency right now. All right. What no, do you need I'm me to fix Charles for you? Because he is, huh? What do you need? Just tell me if there's anything you need me to fix for you, and I would love to do it. Okay, I want to exercise my privilege right now. Since you can't be Steven, expected I, to do anything. I would anything never to... ask you for anything. Oh, okay. I'll never ask you for anything. Don't worry. Um... You're Charles Barkley because he is simultaneously on one hand like a proponent of respectability politics. Um, this like whole 
you know, pull up, black men need to pull up their pants. They need to behave better. They need to stop with the AAVE. Yeah. Like they, they need to be good role models. But have you ever seen that commercial that he did? Nope. Um, called like, I'm not a role model. I'm a basketball player or something like that. Uh-huh. You've never seen this commercial? Uh, no, I'm not a big basketball pull, fan. You know. Come on, pull it up. No, I believe you that he did this commercial. I believe you. No, no, no. But like, I want you to see it. Like it's, it's literally, it's a commercial. It's less than 60 seconds long. All right, damn. I'm Come on, in pull the it up. middle of like some serious factoring building and I'm doing, I'm making good progress right now. I, it's probably a thing where it's like, I'm not, I don't stand as a role model for my whole fucking minority. Don't expect me to. Don't judge my whole minority by my actions. Some shit. I'm sure we've. No, no, no. Not, he doesn't even zoom out that oh much. He's literally God. saying that just because I um, make a lot of money, just because I dribble a basketball, he literally says that. Okay, that does not mean that I'm qualified. Okay. I'm watching. Here you go. Jessica. I am not a role model. I'm not paid to be a role model. <laughs> Paid to wreak havoc on the basketball court. Parents should be role models. Just because I dunk a basketball doesn't mean I should raise your kids. Okay, this doesn't even have to do with racism. Never mind. What about it? No, it had to do with the model minority thing. And, no, and it does I disagree. Have to do with racism because I don't think that had to do with the model minority thing. Additional burden on um, how, how, is, how does it not? I think serious? that I think that oh. was a commercial that had more to do with celebrity idol worship than model minority stuff. I think I don't think it's mutually exclusive. You don't think that that's be, that his opinion on that isn't informed by, somewhat, you know, because of his race and stuff like that. No, no, no. Because hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. He wasn't saying that like I shouldn't raise your kids because I'm like, um, or like I'm like the model minority for your kids. It was because I'm an athlete, because I'm a celebrity. I don't want to be a role model because because I'm just a basketball player. That I don't think that was race oriented. I think that had to do with like celebrity worship. But he goes on to tell other black men that they should be, you know, positive role models and stuff like that for the black community. Like he does ask that of of black people, and I really don't know. Um, well, you can simultaneously like what, how you feel about that. Yeah, you can simultaneously acknowledge that something sucks and that it's kind of racist. Well, but it's still true, right? Like you are as a minority kind of like held responsible for how like people view other minorities it's not fair but it's true oh i know no one's saying i'm not saying it's fair i'm not saying it's right and i know that that's the case i acknowledge well but you're implying that other people people are saying that it is fair or right and it's not it sucks but it's true no i'm not saying other people i'm saying you specifically steven like yeah and i'm telling you right now that that they have a responsibility to behave in a certain way or to act a certain way online to conduct themselves to kind of like you know, be a model minority. Yeah, because you kind of do. It sucks, but like, I mean, it, it, it's, it is where society's at right now, right? Do you really think that though? Do you think that if Bella Porch or like, okay, you didn't know her content, Bell Delphine started, did this huge pivot and started trying to do this like positive female representation thing that you're talking about, that that would work out well for her? Yes. Well, wait, wait, work out well for her? No. That's one of the reasons why this argument is so hard is because you're almost, in a way, asking some of the larger minority figures to martyr themselves or to take sacrifices um, in order to advance the culture. But the reason why I'm comfortable doing that with larger figures is because they can do it. They can take the hit. They've got the ability to absorb those losses. And it's kind of like on them to set the norms, right? I think it's so precarious, though. Um, I don't. And I guess the thing is, like... I, I think the ask is reasonable. I think it should be, it's it's even fine to kind of ask them of that. But when, I guess I just don't like this villainizing of people or, or people seeing it as like, you're failing women. It doesn't you're have to be, like, yeah, I like, agree. Like, you don't have to like, villainize. People. That's shitty. But like, I think we can recognize that there is a potential for change. Like if big change is going to come in the streaming industry for women, it's not going to come from 15 viewer streamers. It's going to come from people like Pokemon, mm. right? And the onus is kind of on her as much as it sucks to kind of like set that, right? No, oh, it's true. And I know, like, I'm just, I, um... But it's not I, fair, I, it's I bullshit. Think. Like, I acknowledge that, of course. Like, I don't ever have to worry about shit like that. Um, so yeah, it is, it is, it is bullshit, but... So do you think you're feeding into it at all by, and, like, helping kind of perpetuate that by asking individual creators to... Nope. ...hold themselves to a higher standard? No. no I think I, fi- I fight against that in, in, every time I can by telling people that, like, hey, if a woman comes on and she's stupid, it's a stupid woman. Or it's a stupid woman. It's not that all women are stupid. Or, like, kind of like, because when a guy comes on, it's just a stupid guy. It's not all men are stupid. So I try to push back against that um, archetypalization or that stereotyp- stereo- stereotyping um, as much as I can. Mm-hmm. But it's still a reality... It's still a thing I have to recognize. And then you have to ask other, like I'm pretty sure even in minority communities, they know that, that when you do things, you are being judged and your whole race is being judged and it reflects poorly on everybody. And that's just kind of how it works. It sucks, but like, 
It, it, it is the reality, right? Dang, the real new word just dropped. Archetype. What did you even just say? Archetypalization? Uh, the stereotyping. When you create an archetype? I don't know. This is beautiful. Thank you. Um, the second, you know, the second that I asked, I said that to Lav about the egoic thing. I was like, oh my god, this is like an Ayn Rand. This is like an Ayn Rand thing, right? Um, I, has she read Ayn Rand? She, I doubt it. <laughs> but, or I mean, even just like a couple of chapters or something like that. I was like, oh, I think this is like the anthem or like fountainhead or like thing about the ego, right? Um, anthem is what you're talking about, but um, yeah, no, I doubt she's read Ayn Rand. <laughs> No, uh, I think lab, may, you know, from cover to cover, I don't think so. But like, uh, no, she hasn't yeah, read any of it. She's hyped on like feminist theory and shit. I don't think she's ever. Well, you know what? Fuck. Maybe she has. And Rand has her, has her own brand of like, you know, s some feminist stuff, though. Yeah, I'm sure she does. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, I, I like even though Ayn Rand's uh, prose is like really ham fisted and kind of like hard to get through. Cringe as fuck. Um, huh? Cringe as fuck. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, you know, but she has like so many interesting perspectives. Like she was in an open relationship and stuff like that. Based. So what you're saying is I could have. Well. You could have what? I'm trying to think if that was a sexist comment. You, I mean, it was about open relationships, so no, it's relevant. So I could have banged her. That's what you're saying. If she was alive today, there's a chance. Yeah, yeah, you definitely could have gotten into Ayn Rand's panties. Thanks for establishing that. Good job. Okay, thank you. You're brought up her open relationship. I don't know why I was kind of cringe, so I had to play off of it. I had to vibe off. What, what, what is cringe about acknowledging that she was in an open relationship unless you think open relationships are cringe? It wasn't worth acknowledging. She's a wonderful, beautiful woman of libertarian ideals, and you didn't have to bring up her sex life, and you decided to do that for no Who brought up her sex life? I just brought up the nature of her relationship. Open relationship is her sex life, her private sex details. That's what you were bringing up. Why? Mm. No, I'm not. I mean, she brought. She talked about this openly. She cool. was. Well, she I was just talked about it too. About it. Yeah. Yeah, but why, why are you getting after me for bringing it up then? I'm not getting. After I, I love how, you, for how it. you 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 can talk about getting into her panties, but I can't even just mention that. Like, did you know she was in an open relationship? You're like, wow. That's fine. How could you I'm say glad this? you brought it up. That's good. Good for you. That's very egoic of me. It was actually yes. <laughs> Well, my only criticism, I guess, with this, like, talking out of both sides of your mouth is kind of how I see it, is that, like on, the, like, on the one hand, you're like, it's fucked up that you're held to this standard. But on the other hand, you're like, uh, okay, like in denims, you know, you're like, denims, should you really be doing that? Like, you could be setting a better example, kind of like finger wagging, you know? Yeah, but I mean, it's like this. It's like, tell, it's like talking to a person. Like, imagine you're talking to, like, a woman in tech, and you're like, listen, you, to impress, you've got to try twice as hard. Like, imagine if she just responds, that's being sexist. And I was like, no, girl, that's just reality. <laughs> like, you think sucks, that but... I was saying that? I'm just saying that you have, like, a, I think a fundamental misunderstanding of, like, where these, uh, like, the where misogyny or, like, these things come from. Stop! If you think... It's not that I have a fundamental misunderstanding, okay? What I'm saying is that if I go to the top of Twitch or the top of a lot of these creator platforms, these people don't need the extra money. They're not victims of capitalism. They're not victims where, oh, God, I have to participate in my own oppression. They could just not so do it in a little victims. bit less. But These people are rich. Th yes. They're doing great. But the problem is that if if I go to the top of these things and 50% of all women creators at the top have fucking OnlyFans, Fansly, or Fans House, you are not only participating in your oppression, up, you're setting the standard. You're enforcing those norms now. And now it becomes like even more of an expectation. That's I don't know the issue. to what it, that like these micro celebrities, these influencers are really able to meaningfully impact. Well, they're culture. not micro when yeah. they're, of I course like they impact they're, it. They're, they're, they're reflecting it more than they're perpetuating I or creating it. I wholly disagree. How? Because you have a ton of influence over how people treat each other and act like from the top. Jesus Christ, like after I did politics on Twitch for like two or three years, now it's like ran by fucking socialists. And now you got I know like, that they have like a non-zero amount of influence. No, it's not non-zero. I, I think it's pretty big. Like here's the thing. If five, I'm not saying they should do this and this would be radical, but let's say five of the top female streamers all got together and for one month, they were gonna do streams where they streamed with no makeup and they didn't do their hair or they just like brushed it and that was it, right? They're not going to change the whole world overnight, but I bet there'd be a lot of other streamers who'd feel more comfortable doing it if they saw them doing it.
Guaranteed. That would be very strong. And do you know why? Because there's like solidarity. No. There. Oh, like God. Why did you history. go to the cringe? You go to the most cringe fucking word. That you're like schizophrenic. Why are you so fucking triggered just but, because I said the word solidarity? Because there was, that had nothing to do with what I said. That's not strong because it's solidarity. It was strong because you've got people that are the lead representatives of the people in that category. And they're taking a step to share. Like, that hey, wasn't misogynistic at all. Do, do the little like feminine lispy voice again for me. Do it again. I do that for everybody that, that I disagree with. I'm saying that oh, these, are, okay. these are people that are leading. They can be leaders. I'm sure when you were making fun of, of ABBA or something like that, yeah, you're definitely going to be using that like lispy little feminine straw man voice. Got no, it. I use my ghetto voice for him. Okay. I'm saying that these got, people oh, cool. can be leaders in their minority communities or leaders in their industry showing like, hey, this is the example that we could set for other people. And I think that's a good thing. I think that's, I think that's positive. I think you can do a lot with that. I do. I, I'm not disagreeing. It is a good thing, you know, but I guess I look at it and it's like, I can, you, we can like, I feel like I'm, I would be screaming into the void to look at Amaranth and tell her to do something different than like her current business model or like look at Belle Delphine and be like, I know that you're making all of this money, you know, with this niche that you've cornered, but how about, have you ever considered doing this other thing that you're not financially incentivized to do that is of great social cost to you? <laughs> No, I understand. And that's why I'm not going to, I would never tell people to do it. And that's why I even said my own words. I literally said, you're kind of asking them to martyr themselves, which is rough. But like, if people aren't willing to step up and be those examples then things probably just won't change, especially if they keep playing into it. Right. I think that a lot of the change comes from large single figures deciding like, hey, I think that this needs to be different. And I think that individuals have a lot of power to shape the narratives of these communities when they're like the leaders in their industry. That's why, unfortunately, um, that's why athletes are role models. You know, Charles Barkley can make as many commercials as he want about like, I can't raise your kids, but you are. A lot of these kids are raised listening to their favorite rappers, looking at their favorite entertainers, um, looking at their favorite athletes. Like, that's just how it goes. So you believe in like great man theory? Uh, I don't know. what. Oh, I'm going to guess. Does this mean that like single like men can make huge changes in? Individual people are born with these like necessary attributes or whatever that put them above the you know the normies the the. Um, I don't the, know the if masses. I necessarily believe in that, but I do and believe that. Then they're responsible for like they're p assuming you know all of these positions of uh, authority and power sure. and stuff within if that's society. How, yeah, that's how you interpret it. Then sure, I think that like there are individuals that can have great sway over like um, how people in an industry or how how people that follow them yeah conduct themselves in Ooh. life yeah. I disagree with this. How? Entirely. Because you're putting way too much emphasis on like the impact that one single individual can have. Like for okay, example, wait. okay, like Can I just be misogynistic then if I have no influence over my audience? Oh, you uh, you you always know Steven, you don't have to ask my permission for that. Go right ahead. No, but I'm just saying that like we would obviously acknowledge that I have a large sway over my audience on the way that they conduct themselves. Why wouldn't the same hold true for anybody else? Over your audience right not the not the culture well no no but because like, your audience bleeds over into the culture that if my whole audience believes like a certain thing then i think that other audiences and other cultures will kind of start to follow but it's that's just like some banal like hero worship you're almost saying like you know people are here for my takes and some of them are yeah but a lot of them no, no, are no, there for this your is... personality and for you and stuff so like if you if it's not wait, wait, hold on wait, i gotta ask wait wait i gotta I, hold, on, hold on hold on this is so nonsensical okay let me just ask a question okay so when 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 Bad. when Kanye West, or the rapper formerly known as Kanye West, when Ye Easy. is Yay. when Ye is anti-Semitic, yeah. does that make his audience more anti-Semitic? Um, I actually think he's alienating a lot of his native audience, and he is pandering to an entirely new audience of anti-Semites. And of his native audience, he is bringing out kind of like the worst ingrained biases that people have if he's finding anti-Semitism in those people that were already fans of him. So you don't think don't, that so you don't think that content creators or entertainers can influence their audience at all? I never said that. I just said Okay, let me ask again then. Okay, because you didn't answer. So let me ask one more time then. I'm gonna ask the exact same question. When uh -oh, Ye no asks pad, debate mode. When Ye asks or I'm sorry, when Ye acts in an anti Semitic manner, does he make his audience more anti Semitic? Yes. Okay. So if he can act in that so let's say that Ye acts in a more reasonable or responsible manner, can he make his audience more reasonable and responsible? Can he make his audience more reasonable and responsible? I think that he's still one person, so he can only do so much to, like, just as, again. Just so you know, I'm going to ask the exact same question when you finish this. I don't know why you can't just answer that question. Can you shut the fuck up and okay. let me finish yeah, my that's point? Fine. Some just, answers need to be more nuanced than the yes or no. No, it doesn't. Not this one, but go ahead. Go ahead. 
Restate your question since you're going to ask it again. Yes. Go My it. question is, if Ye were to act in a more reasonable and sensible manner, do you think that his audience would become more reasonable and sensible? I think that they would be more quiet about their anti-Semitism once again. Because so it, would if be, you're, it would start becoming socially un unacceptable. So yes, he would have an influence on it. Again, I never told you that they don't have any influence. It's just not as significant as you think, is all I'm saying. Okay, I don't know what as significant as you think is. What I know is that when I act in certain ways, members of my audience emulate me. I could be, actually, I'm going to expose you right now, live on stream. I remember Please you telling me, me, you told me, wow, a lot of the people in this audience sound just like you. I think you said that to me after the event. Didn't you say that? So the way that I speak mm -hmm. carries over to my fans, right? So obviously I have a large sway over them. It's not that I'm a fucking hero. I'm asking for like idol worship. It's just the fact of the matter is, is that when people um, act in a certain way and they've got followers, those followers will tend to act like them, no? Yeah, but they're not ideologically tethered to those specific um, cadences or the ways that you're behaving, they would latch on to anything that you're doing. So you're kind of saying like in Kanye's case, it's like people would become anti-Semitic and then he has the influence to make them so committed to that, that even if Kanye moved off of anti-Semitism, that um, they would still cling on to it. No, I don't think I that's think true. That if he moved off of it, they'd probably move off it too. I think they'll probably follow their content creator around probably. Exactly. So it has a lot more to do, I think, with like kind of a parasociality between that individual's personality than it has to do with any of their stated positions. But it it comes out as though they're more concerned with like the stated positions or they're, they're, that's what they're really um, enamored with when it comes to being a fan of like yay in this case. But I'm like, no, you would if you know, no matter what shit he shovels to you, you're going to eat it up if you're if you're a certain type of like yay stan, you know. Whether it's anti-Semitic bile or if it's... Um, well, hold on. I don't understand you know, why you're... What, what, this is just reinforcing what I'm anything. saying, right? So if your fans are going to eat up whatever shit you say, however you want to say it, wouldn't it be better to give them, like, good shit to eat up? Um, I think you've argued against this, though. It's like, it's not the conclusions that, that are important. No, no, it's hold a, on. That's a way a unrelated topic. No, no, no. That's a way unrelated topic, okay? It's, it's entirely related it's to It's not this. at all related. People don't always absorb processes. If I act in a certain way, people are like... No, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Okay, I don't even know where we're at in this conversation right now. Let me restate my because thesis, okay? When content creators act in certain ways, they can have effects on the culture. They can even effect a new culture. That is possible. I don't. Do you disagree with that or do you agree with that? They can have impacts on it. I don't know that they can. I am um, uh, like. Yeah, they probably can't. If Kanye West can came out and said that like the earth is flat, culture. I don't think that everybody's going to believe it. But you definitely move the needle. Uh, yeah, of course. Okay. So if that's the case. Wouldn't you want your quote unquote model minorities to move the needle? Um, yes. Well, then what do we disagree on? I don't know. You're fucking screaming, trying to act like we're disagreeing. I'm trying to get into the nuances or whatever, and you just get into debate bro mode and you want dunks on me. I'm not looking for dunks. It's just, you'll agree with like, if Kanye West ant ant act acts anti-Semitic, can his audience get more anti-Semitic? Yeah, of course. If Kanye asks... If Kanye West acts more reasonable, will his audience act more reasonable? Well, hold on, I need a 52 paragraph explanation for that. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> I, like, I just... want to have like a discussion and get into the nuances of it, not like cast this like yes, no dichotomy well, or Sure, but I'm just trying to make and, sure like, that we're on the same page. Trying to see like the, the shades of gray that exist in these sure. and understanding these concepts. Which is fair, but sometimes it feels like you're talking out both sides of your mouth, you know? <laughs> that's what I said you were doing. I, I think know, you're projecting a little I bit, Steven. I'm not projecting at all. That was called a callback. Excellent. I, I never. I'll look that one up. I never heard of it. Okay. Hi. Um, Hi, Pixie. I just have a few questions. Um, because maybe I'm just like having a fundamental misunderstanding. Um, or maybe the answer is really obvious and I just don't know it yet. So I guess I just don't really see. I, I can understand what's wrong if like too many women are doing OnlyFans and that pressures other women to do OnlyFans, but. There's nothing wrong inherently, right, with having a lot of women doing OnlyFans. The problem here is just potential pressure, right? Or yeah, the problem is that it fosters the expectation. Women are in this space to be masturbated to, and I know that because every woman, even the ones that get into it for non-masturbatory reasons, eventually, like, yield to the masturbation. Okay, I, I guess... The difference, though, is that, like, I think that pressure for women to have OnlyFans and stuff like that is not coming from the, those sex workers or, like, the biggest... Um, no, and no, most no. Visible well, workers on this platform. I think it's coming from the culture overall because it's like you have to ask yourself what influenced people like Amaranth Bell, Bella Porch to, or to Bella Porch is not a sex worker. I'm sorry, Bell Delphine to get into it in the first place. Like, sure, and we can talk about where they came from in the first place. But the reality is, is that they are reinforcing it. 
Like that's it's undeniable that if I go on oh, Twitch and other other female content creators have spoken about this, that like the expectation is when you're on Twitch, eventually you're making an OnlyFans or you're an only whatever you're, that you're going to do a fans house or a fansly that it's going to be there because everyone else is doing it. Why wouldn't you? Right. Yeah, and you're it's, consumed by the machine. You can call it what you want or you can cope in the ways that you want. But the reality is, is that if every single person. What is this cope? I, I don't have a problem with The cope that. is that you're trying to absolve like individual actors from all yeah. responsibility because they're quote unquote victims of Not the system. Not all responsibility. That's why I was saying you were straw manning me earlier. Okay, then what do we disagree on then? Then we agree that like if you chances are if you're doing really well and you think that like maybe this shouldn't be a requirement for every female streamer, maybe it's better to just not do certain things. We agree. Like then. we, bo I think we we both agree on the base thing. I think the only uh, disagreement, and you want to like hammer this point or whatever, is how much because I guess I'm just skeptical that it's like as influential as you're saying, but it's undoubtedly very influential. I just don't know. How I much. think it's super influential. I think this was wasn't this the debate that broke up the Real Housewives or whatever or the Housewives of Twitch podcast. I think it was Michaela and Melina, uh, Nick's girlfriend or fiance or whatever the fuck they are, um, were disagreeing over this particular point. Where I think Melina was making the argument that. Um, uh, the expectation comes from men on Twitch, and it's not fair to hold the women accountable. But Michaela was making the argument that, or no, I think it's, I might have had this background, but the, one of them was making the argument that, well, when every single woman, like, like inevitably, opens up an OnlyFans, then the expectation for every other female creator on Twitch is to have an OnlyFans. And that, as you saw, more and more people flood Twitch with these, like, OnlyFans and shit, that basically, like, if you were ever a female creator, people are always asking for it because it's, like, the expectation on the platform, basically. That's it, becomes true. The, it becomes the expectation for women online in general. Absolutely. But I yeah. think that like if you're like a high powered like female content creator, I don't think you have to feed into that. And like you can't sure, use sure, the sure. I'm a of victim thing as an excuse because you're not a victim of like capitalism. You're you're like you're just trying to find more ways to make money. Think about no, people being it, victims. It's 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 not about casting someone as like the victim or any of these no things. Right. I'm just trying to like use a like a lens to analyze this and understand where and identify where these things are coming from. Not cast people as heroes and villains and victims and all of these like silly little roles. Well, but I was trying to say earlier that you can have a positive effect on the culture, and you like we're trying to like attack that. Like, no, if you're a minority, you shouldn't be expected to do anything positive ever. You're always a perpetual victim. How are those two points incongruent? I, I can simultaneously think that it's bullshit that will hold minorities to this standard, but acknowledge the fact that whether we like it or not, they absolutely are held to those standards. Wait, that's literally and my position then. What are we even disagreeing I know that's, on? That's why I feel like you literally tried to find disagreement. Where, you're the one that came in disagreeing with me! Arguing. I love how everybody calls me the debate bro when I swear you're you literally- No, no, cares. stop. You literally came on and you're like, look at this Charles Barkley commercial. You're asking them to be model minorities. That was your argument against me. You literally made that claim of me. I, what, but okay. just own it. Uh, just just be like, say. yes, Chad, yes, I, I am asking them to be model minorities. But, but yes, I am. Them. Yes, I am. I am asking. Okay, you. Yes. there you go. Okay, at first, but you were fighting me on that. You're like, no, I'm not. I'm doing this other thing. And blah, 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 no, I and literally like, said that it. like there is the expectation, and it is bullshit. I acknowledge mm -hmm. that that it is bullshit, but it's reality. It, it is what it is, and I think that even people in those positions recognize that. But. Sorry, okay, Abba, we were talking about minorities right now, okay? What do you want? Well, let's throw it back to Pixie. Wait, wait. Pixie oh, shit, shit. actually, yeah. No, 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 actually, I've been waiting longer, so... We're Abba not... did join before Pixie, to be fair, yeah. Okay. Pixie is a woman, she has privileges, okay? <laughs> she should speak first. All right, does here white come the white women. women. Over, does white women come with a black man? No. Uh, actually, yes, it so does. I wrote this down Let Abba there. go! Abba, go. I know, uh, the women in this game always complaining about misogyny. True. Um... Yeah, we're making it you, up. You, you, you definitely flip flopped because I actually wrote it down earlier and I was going to chime in. But Ooh, I haven't took notes on my positions. All right, what did I flip No, no, I, I just think well, as you guys were arguing the merits of everything, I, I just think it's interesting watching the conversation unfold because I don't think you, Aaron, in particular, realize how your messaging comes across to most minorities. And most minorities hearing your kind of messaging, I think this is actually why I think the right wins on a lot of cultural war issues and gaining ground in regards to minority voting. Is that your uh, particular take uh, takes away a lot of the Excusing agency? Using all of these people, right? Okay, all right. You give it just cut me off. Uh oh. Yes, because I, I think I know. Okay, here we go. Here we go. This is the benevolent uh, racism. Oh, of yes, benevolent, benevolent racism of, income. They will cut off the job. a minority as he's trying to speak to an issue within a minority community to tell them what they think is best for them. True. Okay, let Abba, I'm, let I'm my speaking. Abba go. Let done? him talk, let him talk, chill. Okay, go. Uh, all right. Get your right. whole thing Thank out, you. yeah. And so I think the point I was trying to make is that when it comes to messaging, especially online on social issues, um, what ends up happening is that liberals kind of remove any of the agency that minorities have. And I'm not a you liberal. Are, oh my God, can I finish <laughs> my point? Yes, you can go. Yeah, go for it. Or left-leaning people. Do you want to make another correction? Just go, uh, just go, okay, you're fine. All right, okay, all right, all right, thank you. 
So yeah. when it comes to the messaging online from the left in general, um, the way that they come across is that they basically remove a lot of the agency from minorities when it comes to these issues. And within the minority communities themselves, that's not a lot of the dialogue that happens. Um, you know, even recently with the uh, murder of Offset, one of the rappers from the Migos, there's a lot of conversation in regards to how a lot of this hip hop music and this kind of uh, cultural phenomenon that we have going on within the black community in regards to violence and inner city and how like prevalent it is, uh, is being reinforced by a lot of the media. And sometimes artists don't want to take responsibility for the fact that their music may be negatively impacting this stuff. And so these are conversations in which like in these communities themselves, they're trying to admit to this agency and to accept it, the fact that we have some form of- It wasn't um, offset, it was, it was taken Oh my God. Who cares? Go. You I do. I appreciate the, the correction. I appreciate the you correction. You do care? Wait, name, four, name three of those songs. Go. Not, uh, I can know who they are without listening to the music. Yeah, that's what I thought. So you yes, don't care. Go. Yes, okay, go. I, Take off. Go. Oh my I care about Abba not spreading misinformation. Okay, fine, go! Because. Abba, finish your point. Sorry. <laughs> oh, bruv. The misogyny in me is fermenting. All right. Um... <laughs> No unironic racism. Yeah, no making that comment, racism? Abba. Bad. Racism. Racism. No, no, it's not even ironic. It's just like, okay. no, <laughs> white women are really the worst. Stop. You're no, 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 no. I'm going to say, I'm going to say. Abba, did you know that I'm white? Wait, she's not white also. She's like Mexican or something. Okay. Bro, she's white presenting. I don't really care. Okay, she walks through life as a white woman. No, we're getting infinity because I If she could do the submersive stuff, let's do the other Stop. Hold on. Please, my minority friends. Please, I need you to get along with each other. Please. You look white. You look kind of white to me. Please, stop. She does. She's not. I do, but believe me, people don't, people don't treat, I don't get treated white. She does. Stop. Okay, we believe you. Okay. Let's All take right. deep you, breath. Are you, are you, are you going to interrupt me for the hundredth time? She's um, not going to. Let Abba no, finish. Go, okay? Okay, go. These people. <laughs> I don't not know. these people. It's me, Abba. Say, say it by name. It's Aaron. We know what the problem is. All but right. go for it. All right. Okay. Well, Destiny, I'm gonna I'm gonna just let this one go, uh, and you're gonna enjoy your hundredth no! arc in the, the school. No, 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 no. Uh, say what you're gonna say. No, say what no, you're gonna say. No, honestly, honestly, bro, these kind of conversations are so unpleasant. Like these are definitely the worst people on the political spectrum. And every time we I should talk be to having them, them. No, let you know? let him no, no. finish. No, you can have your circle jerk with three white women <laughs> talking about racism, and I'll leave you enjoy it. No, Cheers. no, go on. God damn it, no, Aaron, you gotta turn down the combativeness. Stop interrupting. Okay. That's just who I am. No, it's not, well, don't be that. Uh, am I crazy or do I feel like she was not that combative? No, it's frustrating when somebody is constantly cutting you off, okay? Lav, there was a moment on stream, believe it or not, I called a woman a dumb bitch once, okay? Because she kept cutting me off over and over and over again, and it almost drove me to insanity, okay? It has an effect on a, a mind. Steven, right? you interject like, like a motherfucker that. and nobody considers it to be cutting off. It's like, I'm, I just want to make like, Stop. a little- Stop! Oh, wait! People always like consider me to be cutting off. Of course they do, okay? Steven, Chill. Steven is debate lord daddy. He no, stop. No wrong. No, that's you. Oh <laughs> no, my right. God! Now we're now we're on the end where you blame everything on misogyny when you're just being fucking stupid. But okay, okay. that's cute. Go well, ahead. You relax. I was making <sighs> a little. I was making a little meme, Steven. Uh, yeah, you okay. came into a heated conversation. Okay. I want Abbott to come back. He was talking about how in minority communities it's not what's happening, and that I was like removing agency. I absolutely like. I'm not trying to do those things. No, you are. You're saying that he's a little black retard, and he can't be expected to be like a model citizen like wow. white people are, like, and everybody else. That's the feeling. No, no, but that's the argument. that's Thank the feel. Well, he was what trying to deal, explain. Man. You won't even let me finish. He was trying to explain that that's the feeling that minority communities get sometimes. That when white people talk about them, it's like, oh no, like you can't be expected to do anything. Like you're a minority. You're black. Like come on, what are you gonna do? You're a perpetual victim. Let's let the white people step in and fix everything. That was well. Like the, he started off with saying that liberals and leftists do this, and then he pivoted to saying that it's a race thing and that white people do this. No, he started off of by saying there. he said liberals do this, and then you re, like you interrupted with no point to say you're not a liberal, you're a socialist, which in the context of this conversation was totally irrelevant because um, it didn't matter. You knew what he was talking about, and then after that he was saying, okay, well it's the thing that like white people do. He's obviously talking about white progressives. If you would interject that, well, people in Louisiana don't do this, it would also be irrelevant. You just not understand what he's, he's saying. He's talking to me specifically. Okay, he's talking to me specifically, and he was again. And trying to say that I'm white, that I'm a liberal, and I'm just saying like, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, I don't know if giving, that really changes your argument. He's trying to say I that you're giving the you're giving the you. progressive talking points of saying that like, well, you know, these guys are all victims, so they can't be expected to act in like model ways, which is like huge conversations that these minority communities have within themselves over how they should act. Like it's an no. on. 
what no can one. I, like i also i can summarize my argument that i'm just saying that if feminism and anti-racism and anti-misogyny is going to be genuine social activism it needs to be more than just these individual lessons to individual people on how to game the online political space to their advantage no it has to be more accommodating to the to the diversity within these communities that's true but it's probably never going to work if it's only dealt with on the societal level and you don't have individuals in these communities stepping up that's probably a necessary part of it like becoming solved can it's I true. I want the, I want them to step up. I'm just saying my I don't expect them to. Okay. Like I don't think they will. I expect them to. I, I don't think the the incentives there. But continue. Within minority communities, there are people that outright explicitly endorse uh becoming a model minority. That is like a explicit goal for some right. black people. It's true. Respectability politics. That's why I brought up Charles Barkley because he's a, and I think um, I know Bill Cosby is disgraced, but he was a huge proponent of this uh, this philosophy too. I think um, Denzel Washington and Morgan Freeman. I would say also kind of yep. like Morgan Freeman had the whole like stop talking about it to like fix shit. Denzel Washington has spoken about black responsibility. Bill Cosby yes. had his whole pound cake speech where he talked about how people are in trouble for no reason. Yeah, and I think there's a place for that. Like I, I like seeing them talk about those things. I think it's important. Well, it's not that there's just a place for that. It's the general treatment of like it's just weird when as a white person i am given so much agency over how minorities are treated if i treat minorities poorly it's going to cause the culture to be bad if i use racist language even privately it's going to cause minorities to be bad if i treat people in a certain way blah 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 blah. but when it comes to the minority side of things well if you're black you shouldn't have to act a certain way for people to respect you you shouldn't have these blah 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 blah. and there's an element of truth to it but there's also an element of like infantilization to it as well which i think you have to be careful treading that line also, Wait, the Charles do, Barkley do thing. Think, do I come what? off as infantilizing? Yes. This whole conversation. Yeah. Yes. When you say things like, I don't think it can be expected that like Belle Delphine doesn't do pedo porn. Yeah, she's fucking rich. She can do whatever the fuck she wants. These people aren't. When you reach the top, you're not a slave of the system anymore. You're thriving in it. And you can take steps to make changes to positive. Yeah, you reflect. reproduce it. Well, yeah. And you reinforce it. Right. But again, we didn't disagree on this. You were just trying to act like we did or like not. Well, that's not, kind, like, you not made even. it sound like that was an unfair expectation. No, because you want to pigeonhole. We agreed on that too, though. Oh. It, it's, it, it can be both of those things at once. It can be a bullshit I, expectation and yet it Wait. can be something that you should do anyway. To be clear, that is exactly my argument. I said it can be, it is both at once. That like, it's not fair and it's bullshit, but it's kind of the, ex, like, it kind of has to be that I way. know. This transgression started because you got triggered as fuck because I said solidarity <laughs> and then you busted out the notepad or something like that and you wanted to turn this into some, some, some debate uh, uh, like in disagreement that we yeah, don't have. I was good. just trying to discuss it with you. That's what I'm here for. Sorry, fourth thought. Right. What did you want to say? Before Anna jumps back in again, because she's trying to get into this and she hasn't figured out Anna. how. Anna. <laughs> oh, uh, there's a black woman from uh, the subreddit that would like to talk to you for a minute. Uh, she's just talking from anecdote to. Yeah, we all are when it comes to extremely oh, racist woman you brought on the other day. Sure, gotcha. Um, I I listened to a little bit of that conversation that you had with her, and I brought up to you Mahogany Pink's videos. And I think that she's coming from the same place that Mahogany Pink is. And I think that you should react to those videos online because it's really interesting because it's a direct counter to like Andrew Tate and like Fresh and Fit. And I think it's really interesting. And like Cynthia G, right? She brought up Cynthia. I don't know. Yes. But she was using Cynthia G's talking points like verbatim. I could hear it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Before you guys like pivot to that, um, I just, like, again, like, I feel like I have a different perspective when it comes to this, and I would just be interested in hearing what you guys think about it. Okay. Um, so basically, the way that I'm coming from it is I'm thinking, like, I don't have an OnlyFans or fans lead, but, like, I've thought about doing one before for cosplay and stuff. Um, and I know there's this expectation on women in general um, to be, like, sexual on the internet or whatever. Um, but for me personally, I'm thinking about it like, oh, I like cosplay, like it'd be cool to be able to monetize it. And like, I don't mind, like, I don't, I don't feel comfortable with nudes, but like lewds, like I think that can be like fun and I'm young. So why not really? Um, and I feel like the argument here is if I do that, then I am contributing to the pressure of other women having to do that. And you although, failed women. You wait, failed let her finish. Women. I'm stop. Let her finish her <laughs> thing. Jesus. Oh Steven. <laughs> Wait, she's it was cutting off like, I just wanted to exactly. finish her thing. Just let her finish her speech. Go. <laughs> well, so yeah, basically, like if I do that, then I'm committing, it seems like some moral wrong, even though I feel like even, even though there is an aspect of like, oh yeah, this overall pressure, I don't think there's something like inherently morally wrong with the act itself. 
Um, and I feel like when it goes back to what you guys are talking about, like, oh, model minorities, et cetera, et cetera, like in a way the argument can kind of been, be flipped or applied to here as well. So like, oh, like you are saying like, oh, it's other women's like fault if they get pressured or if they do this instead of being like, oh no, like it's up to the individual woman herself. And that's not to say pressure doesn't exist. It's just to say that I feel like it's kind of like being painted in like a black or white light here where it's like, oh, if you start an OnlyFans because you genuinely like want to do that work or you like enjoy it or find other aspects of it that, you know, you, you like and not out of pressure, then you're still doing something wrong. And I don't know how I feel about that. I, yeah, I would just say you are contributing to it, even if you don't want to, and even if it's yeah, not fair. It's low ball. It, that, that is what happens, I think, yeah. Yeah, and I, I think that we contribute to little things like that every day. Like, we all eat, like, McDonald's or, like, fast food, and we know that that's, like, what's killing the planet. And, like, what's killing... Like, <laughs> there there are little indiscretions that we make every single day. I don't think that you're, like, an evil person for wanting to partake in that, but you have to understand, like, the system you're upholding when you do. Okay, so I just... This is, like, very strange to me because I feel like... um people make that argument when it comes to, like destiny letting on content creators like from the far right like you're somehow like enabling them right and it's like oh no like that's not what's happening if there's like pushback some or degree, if there's to a some way degree he is. well no to some degree i am like fuentes is undoubtedly a bit popular more popular yes. now than before when i like that's i have to analyze like the cost and the trade off of that though right so yeah, do you think you do a moral wrong? Increase benefit. okay so do you think there's a moral wrong when you let like right wing creators onto your platform um, I don't know if I would say that it's a moral wrong, um, because my, my, my goal at the end is not to like further their voices, it's to counter it. I don't know if I would say that you're committing a moral wrong, um, when you, if you were to do like an OnlyFans or whatever. Um, all I'm saying is that like the expectation is being reinforced. That's all I'm saying. Like, let's say it was the case. Let's say that you're back on Twitch and you do politics. Let's say that you have, you start an OnlyFans. Um, Bad Bunny is now doing an OnlyFans. Denims has started a fans house. Let's say that there are like three or four other politics girls and they're all kind of like start this stuff. If you join and you're like a politics girl, like let's say that that sock darling girl on Twitter, let's say she starts doing Twitch, like everybody's going to kind of be looking at her like, all right, like when is the OnlyFans dropping? Because that's like every other girl in the space is doing it. Like, why wouldn't you? And I think that that's kind of an uncomfortable reality that gets like reinforced when other people start jumping on, other women start jumping on that, the OnlyFans bandwagon. But it's not wrong for them to jump on the OnlyFans bandwagon. Um, I'd say there are probably varying levels of responsibility. I don't know if I'd ever say it's wrong. Um, I'd have to think more deeply about that, but it, I'm just saying that it does reinforce that expectation. That's like the there, step one. There are different things. There are different things that people do. Like if you're going on and, and doing like the lolly porn, it's obviously you're at much more responsibility for like the negative porn culture than you are if you're just like doing something like Britney Simon, like posting yourself nude in ways that you, you know, ludes or tasteful nudes, like it's, it's a spectrum. Yeah, I guess like I'm just like kind of going back and forth or maybe like I just, I Maybe I'm being too black and white here in a way because I like to view things about like whether we should or ought to do something or whether we like should not do something, right? Um, so I can understand the argument of like, oh no, it's bad because they're reinforcing like this expectation. But at the same time, like it kind of goes back to like, oh, like taking away, I guess, or going back to what Abba said, that having people having agency and you're kind of taking away people's own agency by saying that they're going to just succumb to the pressure well i think um, i could be wrong but i think i don't want to speak for him um but i think abba was making the opposite argument that on your end you're saying that like well i can't resist but do this particular thing and even if it hurts minority communities like i shouldn't be held accountable for that i think he was saying that that's <laughs> kind of removing the um agency of the minority person that and then was pixie saying that she shouldn't be held accountable or that she shouldn't be shamed both that there's like that if there's like an expectation for nudes or whatever in, in politic poli uh, politics communities you can't blame her for that that she's like contributing that is what it sounds like i could be wrong i mean i'm just i don't have like a super firm position on this specifically right now i was just like kind of like spitballing my thoughts that were coming up mm -hmm. um but what i do think is that if you're going to say oh no like it's on the individual woman to not create an only fans or like to like succumb to the pressure um, then I don't know exactly how to phrase this, so I'm just going to say what I'm thinking, and then you guys can help me later phrase this better, maybe. Um, then it feels really weird to be like, oh, no, it's um, bad if a woman decides to do that, um, when you can just say, like, oh, no, like, a woman can just choose not to do that also. You, does that make sense? Am I being clear here? I think, I think so, you. yeah. 
I, 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 I didn't understand I, the last I think thing. That you, right. I think that oh, you uh, underestimate the like, like social pressure in general, though. Like, I, I think that maybe you're someone who's like a free thinker, but I think that most people sort of like are very easily swayed into making like pretty big decisions. Yeah, I feel like people can definitely be, like be coerced into sex work. There's no disagreement there, and, and not even not even a coerce that's like a like a you know put, putting your hand on OnlyFans referral link code, but like even just the impact of all of your like online friends or mutuals doing it, it like away from you, not even telling you that you should do it. Like that's uh, like that social pressure exists, and it's like very strong. It's an interesting paradox because on the one hand, we're acknowledging that like Pixie is a female online content creator is pressured to um, do these things, have these like sexual, ha like produce sexual content. Right. But then on the other hand, Pixie, you're saying there's this weird other part, like pressure to not do it. Right. Like actively being discouraged and like, no, 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 don't do those things because right now the like you have nothing to do with sex work and that's like really good for your image and it's positive for women. Right. It's like, the, it's this weird, again, paradox of like being simultaneously pressured to do it and not do it. Yeah, and I guess like, I just feel really weird about it because I'm thinking at the end of the day, like there's nothing inherently wrong with the sex work itself. The only problem is like the pressurizing um, if you don't and want to do around it. around it, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, sure. I think that you can get into feminist theory about. <laughs> Lav it's, thinks there's something wrong bad. with sex work, but she's too much of a I, fucking I pussy morally, to ever explicitly think, say it. No, but sorry, I, I don't think I don't think that there's anything wrong with sex work in the moral stance. Like I, I don't think that there's anything wrong with sex and showing off your naked body. I think the problem becomes when you commodify and make human sexuality a product. I think that that has repercussions for society. Um, uh, could I stress that? In like, a, like, in like a consequentialist standpoint, not like a morally wrong standpoint. Yeah, what? Are you saying it's like a bodily harm problem? Like you don't like the commodification of like humans being injured or like harmed in some way? And you believe there, like a lot of the sex work is that? There's, yeah, there's certainly that, but I think there's also like, again, like upholding the societal expectation for women to perform their sexuality, I think is really harmful. Wait, I what do you mean? Performance of sexuality is like an expectation. So I, right? I think I think a lot of misogyny is rooted in the fact that men can't see uh, women as like. Can you stop making noise, please? Jesus Christ! I'm about to beat my fiance. Hold on, hold on. Give me a second. Based. <laughs> Good job. Well, I think the even though what like. There's the simultaneous pressures to do it and to not do it. I think the the one that's undergirding both is that like depending on who you're talking to, both people have your like financial interests in mind, and they're saying either do it because you could make money or don't do it because you could make more money. You know? No, the don't do it is don't do it because you're continuing to reinforce like the toxic expectation that women in the industry ought to. That's where the. That's but that could be very lucrative. I, I mean, pro prostitution can be very lucrative, but there shouldn't be like a pressure for women to do it. But there's so much stigma surrounding it that you you don't really break into the mainstream in the That's same way. No, like there's that definitely has nothing like a to do with what there. I just said. Why not? Because it does totally not relevant to anything I just said. You're trying to say that like, oh, like it can be lucrative to do sex related work, and I'm like, okay, but that's not an argument to do it. It's still fostering the negative expectation that you ought that you have to do it if you're like in part of these industries. But you're saying that like the amount of success that these creators can get, like kind of thrusts them into the mainstream and I think it kind of it will always kind of keep them on the margins like they're still doing something that's like deviant and controversial even if it is like very popular and well-funded it doesn't change the fact that like socially there's a lot of stigma that all of these people face in this industry okay well it's I mean like that's not keeping them from doing it I don't understand what the point of that statement is I don't understand it at all okay I'm back I beat him up good job um but as I was saying uh so I think that women uh I think part of my whole thing is that I really want women to exist for purpose the same way that a man does instead of per for purchase. Um, and I, I, I have a feeling, and this is my uh, own opinion of, and also, you know, feminist theorist opinion is that like a lot of the dehumanizing and a lot of the oppression that women and, you know, people with uteruses face is because uh, men cannot look at women like as people. Um, and I think that part of that is maybe biological right because they're men are you know biologically made to to dominate right um but i think that but continue disagree too but continue okay well i i would also like my disagreement to be noted <laughs> yes um, now that we've I, all disagreed with you i've continued uh, okay great um no and i, I so i think that 
I mean, listen, you see all of these things that are like, you don't, I fucking lost my train of thought. Why well, I disagree with that, like, Lav, is because you're, al me. you're almost, sorry, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, is that um, I have this problem with racism, too, when people kind of uh, get at this, like, tribalism, right? Like, this almost, like, explanation of, like, a, oh, well, people are tribalistic, that they, they self-segregate when they're given the choice to, and you're kind of almost, like, naturalizing these things, acting like they're laws of nature when you say that, like, oh, to some extent, like, men dominate women, therefore, like, that's kind of an explanation for misogyny, and... I don't know. It's like kind well, of like the nature versus little, I, nurture. No, I think that. No, I don't think that that's the only thing. That obviously, I don't think that's the only thing. Or else, I'd be like, yeah, women are supposed to be sex workers. Um, Not supposed to be, because you can and you can get the explanation right without then saying like, therefore, they ought to be something. You could say like, well, this is the way that things are, but but we should fight against it. You know. Yeah, that's that's like. Yeah, I mean, I I think that there are multiple reasons why um, men want to dominate women not just biologically but um i wrote this down and i and i brought this up in a in one of my like sex work panels with the erudite um but uh this is what i said i said a man can make himself completely vulnerable while paying a sex worker but because he's the one with the money he's always going to be in control because men have power over women in every sector of society it's close to impossible for him to ever feel truly powerless around a woman and definitely not a paid sexual encounter. A man in this position is very plainly doing what men have done to women for at least the last century and asking a woman to strip herself of her personhood, even her own personal sexual pleasure and sexuality for his sexuality. Um, that's that's like my problem with sex work in like, a, in like a nutshell, is like, I don't think that men see women as like as complex and like, yeah, I don't think that men see women as people. I mean, that's I think why... I mean, like, I think this. Th first of all, I totally disagree that men can't make themselves vulnerable to women ever. That's I think a ridiculous proposition. But I also think that like people, I don't think it's so much that men don't see women as people. I think it's really hard for both genders to empath empath um, empathize with each other because we're not. I I don't think that that's true at all. I think, is... a, I think that most women empathize with men. That is, uh, fuck. Sorry. I was almost really an misogynist. example of that. I though. almost said something really misogynistic. I, I think, I think, Let me see, hold on. I think, that is absolutely I think that not a culture true. Now, I think that there's a culture now, and this is why I detest uh, third wave <laughs> feminism, is because we're trying to like uh, overcorrect with like masculinity in women, like over masculinizing women and being like, fuck bitches, get money, I can do the same thing. I think that that's like a disease. I, I don't, um, I don't, I, I understand what you're saying, but just to, real quick, I think that men and women both have a really hard time understanding like the struggles of each other because the lived experiences and the things they're going after are so. So unbelievably different the perspectives that they're coming from that it makes it really hard for them to understand each other no that's true uh, at least uh, yeah i guess wait, that's just not my experience hold on um, I wait 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 wait, 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 wait. how can you just say that's true when i just contradicted what you said before you said before that a lot of women understand men and i just said i, I don't, don't think they don't but now you just, just said that's said true I don't no i said i don't think that's true oh you don't think that's true the first part got cut off okay all right sorry okay pixie go for it um, I think straight, well, I can talk if you guys want, but um, I feel like this is just going to get like really derailed because I'm just going to start like as true, then like, you know, matriarchies wouldn't exist or like every culture would have like the same, like basically like gender structure and that we don't Well, I think to be that. fair, don't like, like, I'm pretty sure every culture has more or less the same gender structure, right? They do. They absolutely do. I mean, if it depends on like what period of history we're talking about. No, I about. don't think it does. I think it's... Yeah. It, it manifests I mean, like, in different ways, but yes, every society for like the most part is, is structured like in a patriarchal way, yeah. right? There's there's not really like a strong matriarchy anywhere that you could point to. Or there might be like... Jewish community. There might be like one or two, but like not really. <laughs> True. <laughs> Well, no, I'm not d disagreeing with that. Like, I think, um, especially for like looking at like historically, there is especially um, when it comes to like Western imperialism and colonialism, you see like this really set defined role of gender of like how men and women. It's not just act. Western; it's Eastern; it's well, Asian; no, it's yeah, African. No, I'm not saying okay. Well, because it's not like you're trying to blame, like, oh, well, Europe brought, like, sexism to the world. No, I think, like, everybody no, is kind of... Also, other cultures, like, you have, like, places like India and China that had the concept of, like, third gender, a lot of Native no, American I, tribes uh, did. Okay. I don't... I mean, not, not in, like, a big way. This is... You need okay, what do you mean by, like, a big way? Red pill. I, so, third gender stuff, like, I don't think was a, was very much a real thing. I think that people in the West, I think we overblow that a lot to try to make trans people feel better. Practice. But I think that in a lot of places, like, in the ancient Greek shit and in some of, like, the... Um, 
and and in some of like the native stuff like sometimes third gender was just a way to describe like gay men that like rich men wanted to fuck but they didn't want to be gay fucking them so they invented like a third gender so that they felt better about it um and then for indigenous people like the whole like um two spirits or whatever the fuck shit the way that they did that these were not like treated as trans people these were like effeminate men that were treated differently I- i'm just no, saying no, that, no. Yeah. but the point is I-, I think you're misunderstanding what i'm saying here okay. or maybe i'm just not being clear enough which is gotcha. not my apologies um what i'm trying apologize, to apologize pixie <laughs> what i'm trying to say is that the roles that we see like right now with like how like men are supposed to interact and how like women are supposed to interact like there there are things that are immutable to change and have been mutable to change for like a long time and to say that like oh no like this is like implicitly like biological when we've seen like and i would argue even like radical changes in how we how men are supposed to interact with men or how women are supposed to interact with men um i feel like that kind of undermines of like biological like this is how it's supposed to be argument like biology well i think so yeah i think it's changeable it is but Mm -hmm. it's probably important to recognize that a lot of it is probably tied to biology because it seemed to so consistently shown up through so many different cultures through all of human history that's not to say it's unchangeable like we can change a lot of shit of course but like it's probably important to recognize that you're fighting against like very strong impulses or or, um, very strong forces of nature while doing so Oh, I guess. Know, we also know how different testosterone is from estrogen. Like we know what it does to a person. Um, like how it makes their brain patterns work. Like it's it's literally like domination and like fighting and aggression is like very natural. That's not um, okay. I'm sorry. This like kind of like like gets me like kind of mad because um when it comes mad. To, yeah because when, <laughs> when it comes to like people talking about like testosterone or homo- hormones, I feel like they take this like a lot of out of context. So, for example, like the best way like I can describe like the because I'm not saying that testosterone doesn't have effects on aggression. I want to make that clear. I'm not saying that. Um, but yeah, that'd when, be retarded. Yeah. When, but yeah, I know. That's why I'm not saying it. Um, <laughs> but when you make descriptions like testosterone means like a person is like more aggressive, like I'm going to put in this context. Um, what do you mean some- means? What do you mean means they're more aggressive? I, I just said that we know that testosterone like is a, a factor in aggression. Okay, I thought you were implying that testosterone, maybe because of like the previous biological arguments that testosterone. Um, I don't think I ever made the argument that like m- all men should and will rape and kill. I think I just was like, no, this is definitely a, a factor. Argument. There's a biological factor in okay. in women's oppression, in sexism. I, just, uh, I don't know if I agree with that. But anyways, I just want to make something very clear for the audience or for people in general when it comes to talking about hormones and testosterone. Like, people have this, like, idea that, like, oh, the more testosterone equals, like, you know, the more aggressive person you are. And that's, like, not necessarily true. So the best way I can, the best example I can use to illustrate this is, like, if we take, like, Dwayne The Rock Johnson and, like, I don't know, like, some incel that, like, only stays in the room and, like, hasn't, like, really done anything. Like, I think it's, like, pretty fair to say, like, oh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson has, like, a lot of testosterone. That doesn't necessarily mean he's, like, aggressive to day-to-day life. Um, sure, that's true, but like we're, you're now you're talking about like using social factors to override what's probably real biologically, which I think we all agree is not yeah. impossible to do. But like you just have to understand that you're working against like those biological forces. Exactly, I think that we see. Um, I I've made this argument before with like a uh, female to male like um, people on testosterone. Like they they don't have the the social conditioning that males have to like control themselves growing up. So at least in my anecdotal experience, like I just see a bunch of like trans guys being like explicitly horny a little predatory like because they don't know what to do with like all this testosterone that's suddenly making them like extremely horny they don't have like the socialization that men have that's like okay relax control yourself um my counter to that is that um i hear people talk about this idea of like why are you laughing steven what the fuck did i just say that was so bad no it wasn't you i'm sorry our friend is joining us again go ahead okay oh (laughs) okay love the problem with this argument of the like male socialization is that socialization is a process right it doesn't start and end uh like between zero and 18. so you say that you identify these tendencies anecdotally um in these certain communities uh amongst like you're saying specifically like trans men but Mm -hmm. uh you do you think that there is the like additional socialization can occur as they've affirmed their their gender um that would kind of I guess almost like reverse or maybe change the course of the current uh, socialization that they've had thus far. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't think that I don't think that uh, trans guys are like stuck being super horny degenerates forever. I just think that I, I was just oh saying like, it's, it's just something that they're like they're not used to at first, which is like normal. I think that I've also heard complaints. This is all anecdotal, and I don't know people online are crazy, but I've also heard complaints from trans women that will complain that like after well not complain but like observe that like after like doing estrogen for a while they are becoming like a lot more emotional over things that they weren't before either, that that has like a big influence over there. Yeah. And then even with women, actually, I guess with just with cis women, we can see that like as your um, mood changes throughout your cycle, that it like has a big impact on how you react to things too. That's true. That's true. Sorry, I think we're really far off from whatever point Pixie was making. I think that's why, um, I think, uh, I, I think I find it really interesting in these debate circles because I was just thinking about this the other day because I was getting on a plane and I couldn't like lift my bag in the like overhead compartment. Um, obviously I'm small, but uh, I'm uh, like a man just like made it his responsibility and was like, "Do you need help?" And before I could even say yes, he was helping me. And I and I un oh, yeah. I like I thought about the response that like another feminist would have that was just like, "I can do it myself. Fuck you." And as like a cultural feminist who like is a sex essentialist, I I really like I really appreciated that and found it to be like really beautiful and inspiring um that he just like sort of did that without asking because he knew that i couldn't and then it made me think about my experience in debate circles where people are like you're so emotional you're whatever trying to like sort of uh, pin me into this like masculine style of argumentation when i'm just like i i am a woman i do get emotional i do get reactive and i think that that's a strength um i'm also extremely intuitive and and empathetic uh but i think that i don't think that we appreciate each other's differences enough are those necessarily masculine characteristics, though? I think you're a perfect example that they can be more universal and kind of transcend gender more than people would like to acknowledge. Well, I think we have to be careful. Well, I think it's I was not gender, just... it's sex. It's well, I, don't, even... I don't I don't look Being at it as emotional. Gender. I don't I look at I look at the way that like characteristic though. I think we have I a mean... set of characteristics that we call masculine and feminine, and I wish we just had different words for them because like I think there are masculine characteristics that everybody can and does have or should have. Yeah. And there are feminine characters that everybody can or does or yes. should have. And I wish that of they course. had different words besides masculine and feminine, right? Yeah, me too. I maybe female? Like, well, no, no. Female. I'm trying to make them not he's, sex he's linked at all. Make them more general. <laughs> like I'm making yeah. them no, agender. No, there are some there are some that are there are obviously some that are like intelligent is obviously like oh, that's a you know whatever but i think there are some things like strength that is like obviously primarily like male yeah yeah this that's is what true. i completely and totally disagree with i don't think that's true i think that like <laughs> you're so um, dumb that's so stupid if i was ever traveling with you and you needed to beg people to put things in the yeah, overhead compartment little, i would actually gnome. leave you're you the fuck four. i would leave you wherever the fuck you are okay that is one but of my then, one requirements then, for dating women melina aaron any woman that i've ever dated before is always going to carry her own shit the fact that women think dated? the fact that no not oh, you different aaron the fact that women think oh. that they like being weak is part of being female and that they are incapable or like can't carry a bag is one of the most triggering things in the world to me not okay incapable but <laughs> it's also just like <laughs> Steven, like, even if if I haven't worked out in like a year, you haven't worked out in a year. We're doing an arm wrestle. You're beating me, fucking. Sure, I'm not talking about like a competition, competition between the both. I'm just saying that like the general principle of strength. So why would you not? So no. So why would you not see in a place where I struggle because I am a female? Why would you not? You don't yeah, struggle you there. Stop, stop. Wait, hold on. Let me respond. Let me respond. Let me respond. I gotta respond to that. Why would you, you don't I struggle do. because you're a female. You struggle because you think that's what it means to be female. That's my issue. That's, no, that's not what it means to be female. I just don't want to. I don't want to prioritize get, building muscle because that doesn't. That doesn't like. Why would I prioritize that? So that you, you don't have to beg people around bag. you to put a bag in the overhead bin. What do you mean? I've never begged anyone. She did it. To do she anything. said. Oh God, kill me. I can't. I'm just okay. Pixie, go. I disconnected. I can't do this combo. It's gonna trigger the fuck out of me you, you assign it it's to not you that i won't female. do it no it's not that i won't do it i obviously like i've been on a plane and done it a billion times and not fucking gotten mad at anyone for not helping me it's just it was that he saw that i couldn't and then made room which i think is really beautiful like yeah but then you extrapolated that into like oh because you are a female and thus naturally weaker and he is a man and thus naturally stronger when those aren't like inherent that is, female or that male is generally true that is generally true okay it's generally true but that's not like what is it tied down to being female or male it's not, like, it's not ontological out, or like a, what is it if you were if you worked out for a year like there's probably like a guy who's shorter than you who would have like struggled putting that bag too and like you lifting that up would not be like a greater sure, indictment about women or men whatsoever it would just it's making it that story. jesus christ you guys are you guys are making it something wait 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 lav I, I think and i'm talking to you pixie also i think what you're saying is that it's 
it's true that but like it's a it's a result it's not a constant that yes these things are natural in the sense that they're the natural consequence of this current socialization of men and women but they're not laws they're not um it's not nature it's not determined it's not um completely set in stone that's just the social dynamics right now and the way that they're playing out but that could the tide could e easily change uh just give it a couple of like hundreds of years or whatever and you could see the opposite phenomenon where there will be men coming up to women saying like uh, or women coming up to men saying like let me put that that thing in your overhead compartment for you sir read part of that'll never fucking happen what no, no no i'm just like saying i think that's what pixie was saying to you yeah but in, and I, yeah and i think that's stupid like i don't think that that will ever fucking happen like there are there are biological differences between the sexes that are just like everyone like, acknowledges what? that there's biological differences though i think everyone but we're, what we're trying to ask is like to what degree right like, not to a huge am. degree, right? Like, I don't think that women should be, like, forced into being homemakers. This is why I'm a gender abolitionist. Like, I think that women can do whatever the fuck they want. But I think <sighs> that there are some, like, truths Chill. of the world that are, like, men are stronger and bigger. And, you know, women can make fucking children. No one is- so, the I, issue isn't saying that men are stronger. Everyone in here agrees with it. Does anyone in here disagree that men biologically are stronger than women? I didn't know. I didn't know. Okay. No one is saying. No one is saying that men aren't stronger than women. It sounds like you're taking that though to say that men that like strength is masculine. Men might be stronger than women, but strength can be a virtue that both sexes equally aspire to. That's the point. Just because men um, tend to be stronger doesn't mean women can't aspire to being strong. I don't think I. Yeah, I don't think I said that they can't aspire to being strong, m aspire to be strong, but I still think that, like, no matter how much we make it, like, how much we encourage women to go to the gym, like, it's still, there's still going to be a disparity there. No one is talking about them not being a disparity, but there could be a lot less weak women if they're encouraged to, like, see strength as, like, an agender wait, Also, why are we, why are we also quantifying, I, I think that... And this is, maybe this is my, again, I'm a cultural feminist. I'm not like a, there's no difference between men and women. Um, I think that the women have different strengths. Like, I, I think that men, men are like sort of brutes and, and whatever. But I, I think that women have like, What's, women are more like what emotionally does that even mean? strong. Hold on. That's, no, first of all, emotional strength is something that everybody should aspire to. And a general level of, of course, strength are I, also things that every okay, wait why, when you just why say do you think why do you think when I say that one sex does something a little better that you think that like the other sex just ha can't have it because at all? Lav, when you speak, you are radiating autism. Okay, you just said men are brutes. That's not saying that women are a That's little a bit better. That's a generalization. That's a generalization. Oh. Men are, are stronger than women. Oh, yes! There's a difference, there's yes. a difference like yes, you torture me, Lav. I love it. Difference. <laughs> yes. What do you mean by What's the difference between a, a like a form of feminism that's non like non cultural instead of cultural? So like a radical <laughs> feminism would be like um, it's sort of it's like hard to say because these things are all like uh, like you know they're just like fucking slogans they don't really mean anything but what it means to me to be a cultural feminist is to be is to be like a sex essentialist that takes biology into account. What would they argue? Like, do you know? What would a cultural feminist argue? No, what would a non-cultural feminist argue for? That, that men and women are, are exactly the same. Like I think that's a straw man of the feminist position from the opposite side. Like, there are literally people out there that just argue that they're biologically the same? Uh, yeah. It's such a fringe minority position that I don't think it's even worth pretending that... I, I don't think that there are very many people that... I think no, she's I think talking that... about, like, a very niche uh, strain of, like, third-wave feminists that argue that there's no such thing as, as uh, nature. It's only nurture. It's only socialization. But I've I've not... I'm this not has got to be, like, like... any prominent, like, third-wave feminists who, yeah. have, who talk about no, this. No, I, I think the only thing that, the, that those people would, would recognize was, like, the, like, physical differences. I think that there are also, like... I think there our brain and emotional differences as well, like biologically. I think the biggest problem I have is that you give a lot of like descript descriptive claims and like realities about gender and sex, but then you, um, and you imply a lot of like prescriptive ones, but you don't really like clarify what you're getting at. You do this like Mon Bailey thing where you keep retreating to like, I'm just saying there are differences, but it's like, is anyone saying that there's not differences? Like. I think, I think people also, are disagreeing with your prescriptions, or disagreeing well, with your prescriptions. You have to understand also that I'm like, this is another like 3v1 that I've gotten no. myself into. Steven, Wait, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that was my bad, I let me.
Well, I'm not trying to like make you feel hostile or whatever. I'm just no, trying to get like, like an guys, understanding I feel like of you your guys. All you guys all have a like a different point. Like each of you think something differently, and I'm trying to play keep up with like three of you. Like I'm a little. It's a little overwhelming. Uh, I do agree that it can be overwhelming, but I'm not trying to uh, like gang up on you or whatever. No, I, I really want. I'm trying to elucidate your. No, I'm, not, no, I'm not saying I'm like a victim. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not saying that like that. I'm. I'm like oh, you guys are like uh, beating me down. I'm just saying like that's if I sound a little confused, it's because I'm trying to keep up with three different conversations. I feel like I'm having. Oh, yeah, I understand. I still want to have a one on one on one on one with Destiny moderating Tuesday. If you guys are free, I feel like that like we can have a productive conversation more. Um, but just throwing that out there. I like how Lab goes, oh, I had this uh, this guy picked oh. up my bags and I felt so in tune with my womanhood. It felt so good. Like, nigga, you don't feel in tune with your womanhood. You feel in tune with your lazy ass. Have everyone do something for your personality. You you go ahead and you say, oh, yeah, it's like what a woman is to me. Personally, that's not what it is at all, nigga. I don't even know why you say this shit. I genuinely just don't know. I just don't fucking know. And everyone's like, I didn't well, say that. You did say that, nigga. You're like, oh, I feel like, oh, I feel like, oh, such a woman. It's like crazy because everyone says I have this Dang, masculine. I have this masculine aura online because I'm so You're combative. So I'm just so what? Darius, I need you. I need you to put your head in an oven. Now. That's Go. ironic. Go. Oh my Go god. If I said that about you, I'd literally get canceled on the internet. Oh uh, well, well, cancel me. Up yours, woke more. Destiny, can you? We'll Destiny, can you hear me? Through. He's no, I, I think I think he was just pointing out that if he told you, Lav, like a Jewish woman, to put your head in an oven, I think there'd be more consequences for Darius. <laughs> oh, probably, yeah. This this is my Jewish privilege. Why, why would you? Here. Okay, when somebody picks up your bags, why are you saying that was like uh, such a special moment? If it is a special moment, that can exist. It, it, that's not the thing with gender. Showed me, it showed me. Ju- it showed me human kindness. Yes, okay. yes, but you didn't say human kindness. You said, oh, because all these people call me masculine online. It's all this, like, weird stuff where, like, people talk about gender roles. That has nothing to do with it. It has to do with being, oh, my cat, uh, being kind. Hold on. It has to do with being kind, but, it like, no, a woman cat, like a woman would not, I mean, maybe a woman would do that, but I think that you, yeah. chivalry, you, gen, you generally see men doing things and favors for women like that. Where are but, these men? <laughs> I was going to say, but that's not inherent to masculinity as i don't i don't think it's inherent to masculinity but i think that that is like a uh, that is what we define as like a masculine trait right now in culture like it is yeah socially absolutely um i think the confusion was just ascribed i I, I just don't why are we why are we trying to strip like our culture away from like (laughs) when we have these conversations i don't understand we're trying to create we're trying to exist in this like meta where you're like and not nothing really matters because nothing matters and i'm just like i'm just trying to inform my view with what is actually happening around me you're trying to inform Thanks. your view of what femininity is for you personally and that's fine no, that's not but... I, i'm not i don't feel like a like a that doesn't make me feel like a woman that makes me that's feel like what you said no i didn't i just said it made me think it made me think oh okay it made well, me I think about... Pixie and i were just trying to make like observations and get and and have like a greater understanding of these social phenomena, not necessarily um, build them up or tear them down. I think you're kind of like uh, making that assumption that that's necessarily what we're trying to do. I think both of us were just saying that like these are very culturally contingent right now, but that could easily change. And I think it should change in some circumstances. If you think our culture can improve, if you think like, you know, there are things that you, both men and women should share in more, then like, I think we should push towards this change. Like, I think it's like, yeah, like really sad that a lot of men feel like they can't be emotional or talk about their emotions without being shit on. I think that's a real tragedy. And I think like because of like how toxic gender roles can be, that's something that we should acknowledge and change and not just ascribe to biology. That's where I'm coming from. Yeah, that's. Uh, do you think that I disagree with that? Do you think that I think that men shouldn't be emotional? When you say um, that men are brutish or brutes, that's kind of what it feels like. That's what it felt like to me. I was emotional, I'm sorry. But that's what it, it felt like an attack. <laughs> Okay, well, that's not what I, I that's not what I meant. I, do, I whether it be nature or nurture, obviously we see that men struggle with um, empathy and being emotional. Trevor, you made it sound like a nature thing because it came right off the heels of like some of it is. Stephen, you just you just took that position. Some of it is. I don't know why we got caught in the fact that I thought that it was all nature. I don't think I ever said that. Lav, I think the biggest testament to how much misogyny that you face online is that you navigate conversations exactly like Jordan Peterson, except everybody loves when he does it 
and then when you do it you get shit on endlessly for it it's pretty crazy because he, he argues exactly the way that you do he, he makes tons of descriptive claims but he never wants to make any normative claims because I, I don't think that I want, like, I'm not going into this conversation trying to, like, change anyone's mind. I'm just, like, trying to, like, provoke, like, thought. I am provoked. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, I don't, provoke I don't, Steven. I'm not, I'm not trying to change your mind or tell you how to live your life, which I understand is, like, the debate sphere, right? Like, that's sort of... No, like, there's not a debate I, I sphere. We're just having that. a conversation on these particular things. No one is saying that we're here no, to... No, but uh, some of, it gets so emotional sometimes that I'm just like, Jesus Christ, sometimes I... I like you can tell me I'm wrong, and we can have a conversation about that. But I, I when you say like you're not making any like prescriptive claims, you're just making descriptive claims. It's like yeah, I, I don't, I don't feel the need to tell you how to live. Okay, do you think? Okay, want to talk about things the way that I see it? Do you think that men and women should strive for the maximum amount of like emotional empathy that they can? Um, I think that women and men need each other and i'll answer this in a roundabout way because i always do um but i i think that uh i think that men are logical and analytical women can be also but i think men's brains just work more logical and analytical they're problem solvers and i think that women are more emotionally in tune more intuitive and i think that that's why we're like each other's like, I think that a woman entering a man's life will open up that side of him in, like, a really beautiful way. But I think that he does, like, need a woman to unlock it, usually. I have I I, That has nothing to do with whatever I asked, but that's okay. Thank you for well, that. No, beautiful. That well, answer no, I, was beautiful. I think that that did. I think that, that did absolutely did not. Asked. It had nothing to do with what I even said, but it was beautiful. Do you think the average man is smarter than the average woman? <clears throat> uh, smarter, what does that mean? Like, the ability to navigate problems? No. You know when you say that men are more logical, that's what it comes off as, right? No, it, oh. no I, I think, no, that's not what I meant. You think I, that because analytical? you're emotional, Pixie. <laughs> I think that there's, there's like, there's, there's IQ and then there's like EQ. There's like, I think that there's multiple ways that someone can be like intelligent or smart. Do I think that men are, are better at being analytical? Probably, yeah. And you think this is, you think this is biological? Or like this has a biological basis. I just want to make very, want to be really clear. Um, on everything yeah, I think I probably. Yeah, I think probably 30, 40 percent biological basis. Yeah. Okay. Do you think that explains gaps in things like uh, female representation and programming. Yeah, sometimes. Um, I think that maybe not all of it, right? Because obviously women are socialized to like not have uh, high power jobs like that or jobs like that in general. Um, but also, yeah, I think that. I mean, we see now women can do whatever job they want. Like, they're not barred from any job, and they still don't want to do shit like that. Um, so, yeah, I think that's an explanation. I mean, there's a lot to go down on right now, so I'm just going to try to keep it <laughs> as concise so as I can. That was a good expression. Because <laughs> okay. there are a lot of claims made right now. Um, I think you should read into, like like you know like neurosexism and you should read into like brain plasticity and like how there's a reason why ne like when you study psychology or when you study like le like let's say neurology you don't have like a separate course for the male and female brain right um and it's because like these like biological differences that you're ascribing when it comes to um like let's say interpreting like cog like cognition or interpreting like the world around you is like often like overplayed i'm not saying that there's like no differences whatever but it's a lot more case dependent than it is like these general broad claims that you're making about when it comes to like i don't just, think like, that women and men are that different um i think that there are <laughs> you there literally are, like, said oh, men are more logical oh my God. yeah they they are not by a ton i i don't think i'm not talking about men and if women if the like, difference isn't species. that great then why do men need women to unlock the empathetic side of their brain because of the culture that we exist in right now then why are because we talking the, about biological differences at all wait so then it's I all do, but i don't know why you guys are talking about biological differences that oh so question. all like, the differences between so the differences between men and women in terms of like how emotional everything they are that's all just driven by culture not all of it. I just said it's both. Jesus Christ. What are you... Am I, I... I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. I feel like we're having conversations past each other. That I can agree with. <laughs> True. I agree with that. Like, because I don't think um, I ever... I ever said that it was, like, just nature or you just You said 40% difference for biology, though. So... 
I said 30 to 40, yeah, I think that... So I you think, think that, like, 40% or 30 to 40% of the difference in, like, a man's ability to program is that's just brain shit and no amount of changing will ever change that? Well, no, it's not that. I just think that, like, there are, th like, testosterone... What testosterone does to a body makes you, like, significantly different. Like... I thought you just said that just there wasn't does. that much difference, but now you're saying significantly different. No, what... T Yes, it is significant. What what does significant mean to you? Significant can be any number. It can be fifteen percent. That's I don't know. That might be statistically significant, but I think well, yes, you're that's saying, what um, we're talking. No, you, no, we're not. One percent difference can be statistically significantly different, but that's not a significant difference. So, for instance, I can show a statistically significant difference between a person with like like you could have like one hundred and two IQ versus one hundred IQ, and that could be statistically significant, but the difference isn't significant. These are stat terms. I don't care. I'm sorry. I'm just here to vibe. Keep going. My bad. Wait, no, these are stat terms. You're, very, you're being very analytical right now. No, I'm actually using them because I'm upset. <laughs> no, I'm being very, very emotional, emotional right now. Yeah, yeah emotional, yeah. Yeah, interesting. It's because I'm married and my wife has unlocked the empathetic part of me. And as long as we have that psychic link and we're within at least 25 yards of each other, she's doing a really great job. That's why I'm so emotional all the time. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's true. I don't, I don't think that you being emotional is what... I think that both men and women are emotional. I think it's the way that we deal with it that is different. And you think that's that has a biological basis? Only thirty or... to forty percent. Oh my god, Pixie. Jesus Christ! I yes, I don't think that it's all biological, but yes, obviously there's there's something there, and there's no way to quantify how much it is because no one fucking knows. If we knew, wait, that, why would you guess thirty to forty and then say there's no way to quantify it? What is thirty and forty? Are those quantities? Oh my god. I'm sorry. So, Lab, these differences that you observe, do you think that values can be ascribed to them? Like, that some are um, better than others, you know? That there's a hierarchy to them? What do you mean? Because you're saying, like, men and women have these differences. There's these differences in, like, their socialization, the way they interact with each other. Um, and I, I, at least I'm wondering, do you think, like, so one gender has more of the upper hand than the other, just, like, naturally? Is what you're saying? Uh like should one like do i believe in patriarchy like should patriarchy exist no uh no not do you believe in patriarchy but I when you say are, like i think that we are better than each other at different things but okay. i think that they're i think that they're equally i think that we are equally val valuable in society do you think women are worse at video games <laughs> biologically uh i don't know i don't know how can you not have an opinion on that at all uh well, because I don't know how much, like, there's so many things. Like, what kind of video games? Analytically like, driven ones. Like, 99% of video games. I don't know very many video games that, like, you pilot with your emotion. Um, Overwatch. I get super emotional. Um, no, but I think, like, my, uh, games that are more, like, creative, like Minecraft, uh, it's probably uh, about the same. Mm. Um I don't think that's even close, but Minecraft, doesn't that literally play into, like, boys playing with, like, toys and building blocks and... Yeah, but that's that's nurture, not nature. That... Okay, this is, like, some of the most nature-driven stuff, but... Wait, what? Oh. What are you talking about? At early ages, like, it's been shown that boys tend to engage with toys in a different way than girls do. That boys engage... And, and why is that? Do you think it's because of their brains? Or do you think it's because they've watched other boys and other girls play with things? Or because their parents buy them different toys? This is the this is literally the thing the thing that I've been talking about. And you've been acting like Laugh. I've been fucking retarded. No, because you just said earlier 30 to 40% biology. And now you're saying the only reason boys and girls play differently is because of what they're watching? When did I say the only reason, Steven? What oh. are you, you're putting words in my mouth. <sighs> Yeah, I feel like I'm not even having a conversation with you. Like, I don't know what you're doing. It's like what improved blink, but for conversation, she dodges you, every I feel single- I like you're gaslighting me. You're, you're gaslighting me. You're gaslighting- Wait, do you guys feel like her positions are incredibly fluid? Or am I fucking insane? Pixie, straight array, is she being very fluid and bouncing around? Or am I just missing something? You know I'm always going to say that you're fucking insane, Steven. Okay, but me. even with me being ah. insane, is she being very fluid? Is it? Do you understand what she's saying? Here, here's a question. If I were to ask most of you right now, like, do you think the main difference between boys and girls is, do you think that a lot of it is biologically driven or culturally driven? Like, I don't know what her answer would be. Yeah, I agree. I That's what I'm trying to determine. But I think, I don't know if, Lav, if you either, you haven't made the, if, there, if you haven't, made those prescriptions or if you haven't said it or if I'm misunderstanding or if you're going back and I, forth. I have said, I have said the same thing that, that Stephen has said at every step of the way that it is both. 
I like I don't. Uh, am I retarded? Okay, I, like, which, do you think question. it's more of one or the other? Yeah. Which one? I do think, you think it's, it's more, more nurture. I think it's more nurture. I thought you were saying it was more nature. Wait, if you're yeah, talking what about happened with brains and the different brains and all of that? What about strength? Is strength nature or nurture? The differences. Yeah, I, think, I think both. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You guys should all read the article Nature Nurture Lessons from the Pillsbury Doughboy. I know this is really random, but I feel like maybe it would help a little bit. Wait, did you just say um, the Pillsbury Doughboy? I didn't. Well, yeah, it no. Called? Um, it's called the Nature Nurture Issue Lessons from the Pillsbury Doughboy. I just, I'm throwing this out there because I really hate how most people talk about nature versus nurture in general. Um, and because, like, I think it's a really good article. So that's just me advertising. I'll get right article. on this Pillsbury Doughboy article, but, like, uh, which, which, do you remember, like, which specific point was? Wait, can I take uh, a guess? Is it, get, Pixie, is the article about how talking about nature versus nurture is, like, a really stupid framing because they're basically inseparable from one another, or...? Yeah, more or less. Yeah, this is true. Yeah, <laughs> but like you can, but we still can broadly kind of speak about them. But like, it is hard to talk about like because genes express themselves in environment. So technically, every nature thing is activated by some level of nurture, and every nurture thing has some level of nature input. But we can still have like literally what I was. This is no, no, lav, no, lav. I feel stop, like I'm going lav. fucking insane. <sighs> No. Okay, like I just pulled up this article and it's crazy. The authors it says uh, uh, Benell et al. 2022. That's yeah, insane. It's my paper. That's because I was the writer. That's why I knew exactly. Oh my what was god. In. Yeah, I'm published. Amazing. Yeah. So, so, but I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm what's up, Marty? Are you lost? Yeah, I'm. I'm kind of lost. I've been listening for about 30 minutes and I still don't understand exactly what the contention is. None of us know right now. Hey. None of us will ever know. Anna, did you have something you I'm wanted to saying, say? I'm saying the exact fucking same things as Steven. He just wants to fucking fight with me. He literally just did this with fucking uh, Aaron. Yeah. No. Okay. You, Stop. You did this same Stop trying to do this thing. Lab. Stop trying to do this thing. You're like, look, you fought with another person. You're fighting with me. Therefore, both fights are like equally as valid. Stop. Lab. Not he's, what I'm he's doing. trying to use like a you, fight and conquer you, strategy. Yeah, <laughs> I hate you. you guys, Aaron, she you actually believes agreed. you when you say this. I hate you. I hate you both. You guys agreed and you were still fighting you, with Steven. her. And then making it like she was fighting with you and you're doing the same thing to me right now. We've been agreeing for most of this. It's so, this is so weird. I don't know why you do this. I, it's because we're it's, unclear about like how much you think is nature versus nurture. Like you say both, but then sometimes your arguments make it seem like you view it as majorly nature. So wait, that's Steven, can you explain to Darvo to me? I don't ever. understand. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I forgot what I meant. I'm oh, okay. What? Well, that's too bad. I think, Stephen, if I can give you some feedback. Um, no, I don't need or want any from you. But thank you, I appreciate you, that. You really, you really should work on trying to understand someone's position rather than trying to like uh, win. Lav, okay. your positions are incomprehensible, and no, no one. Yes, they absolutely I have, are. I have talked to so many people who understand what I'm saying completely, and I, I have a problem of with that. With yeah, you. because those people aren't critically engaging with anything you're saying. They're nodding along. Yes, going, they oh, are. Yeah. Okay, what, that is so stupid. Let me ask. Yes, of course. Straight Raid, do you feel like she's provided a consistent and coherent explanation of her feelings on the difference between nature and nurture and how they account for the differences between men and women? My consistency is that I don't know how much is-, is I'm just asking- Hold on, wait, whoa, 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 you're done. Through. You explain yourself. I'm just asking if I'm the only one in this room having this problem. Straight Raid, do you feel like you understand? Aaron. Steven. Do you feel like you understand pretty, like, pretty well what her position is on the differences between men and women and how much is like nature versus nurture? Um, yeah, you're the crazy one here. Hi, Pixie, how do you feel? <laughs> I feel like, I well, I, I just, I feel confused, and that's why I keep asking, and I understand Okay, that, cool, like, wait, that's all, hold on, I'm just checking getting the temperature of the room. Marty, how do you feel? Do you understand? Uh, like, is the question whether I understand, like, what percentage that she... Or do you understand, do you understand what she's saying in terms of accounting for the difference between men and women? Whether it's, like, nature versus nurture or some percentage or combination of the two. Do you feel like you understand her position pretty well? Uh, I understand these two things. She's a non-essentialist about gender um, and that she thinks that both of those play some sort of causal role in what, like, culture and genetics play okay. some sort of causal role. And that's it, like... And I don't... Okay, so then here's a question. Lav Loon, do you think that boys and girls will always play with toys differently? Or do you think that they can be socialized to play with them exactly the same? Uh, no idea. <sighs> okay. 
Right. Does anyone know that question? Like, does any? Why are you asking? Because like, asking earlier, earlier, no one has the answer. Earlier, to it. You want me to give you one. Earlier, I suggested that boys you do, this, and you do this so constantly. It's like I don't know if this is like a straw man where like you're like trying to make your opponent look stupid by asking them a question that nobody has an actual answer to. Be and then when I can't answer, you're like, "See, you're so fucking stupid." It's like no one knows this. Earlier, I suggested that it seems to be the case that boys and girls play with toys at incredibly early ages. And you said, well, is that just because they watched other boys and girls play with toys? The implication there is that you don't believe that there are any biologically driven differences between how boys and girls how play with toys. We, how do we know that? I'm not a scientist. I'm not, I, I have no way to, I, like, I don't know how to quantify that. I'm then not, why did you counter me room. when I brought up what psychologists have observed? Like because you were, I don't, because it, irks me that you think that you have the prescription and the answer for I'm not saying I'm I have my only thing was that it seems to be the case that even at early ages <laughs> boys and girls have slightly different brains and one of the evidences of that is how they play with toys that's not to say that it, you can't ever get rid of these. That's not to say that it's like what, so hard. What, what was my counter because I, I agree your with count what they do no you're I just don't know how much and I don't know if that can be changed if we socialize them differently. I don't know. Neither do you. No one fucking knows. So why are you asking me the answer that nobody has? True. It's I think just, some people I, in I this world know that. that they're certainly not in this Discord call right now, unfortunately. Yeah, I, sure. It's like, but you do this like constantly and then I'm the retard because I don't know like an answer to a super hard question that you don't even know. The problem like, is that so it feels stupid. like your answers are like all over the place constantly. And I don't know yeah, like- no kidding. My answers are all over the place. I'm not a fucking, like, so are yours sometimes. If and you then feel you like, me. stop. If you ever feel like my answers are all over the place or inconsistent, feel free to ask me to clarify Holy and I will gladly. You're so consistent and right all the time. You're I like never a, said that. You're like a beast. Are you okay? You're like a lord. Oh my god, you're so triggered right now. I'm so sorry. I didn't know that that would trigger you. But if I'm there's not, I'm not that You triggered. are. You just it's got just super you, triggered. I, if you feel like I, I'm inconsistent on an answer, then feel free to say like, "Hey, explain the discrepancy not, between A and B." It's not even inconsistency. Oh, cuz like, that's the word you just said. You said inconsistent. So I thought you meant inconsistent. My bad. Dude, talking to you sometimes. A masterclass in bickering, seriously. Like, I thought <laughs> you and I, uh, like, we're, we're pretty bad, but, like, you two take the fucking cake. I, I don't think we could hold, like, a, our, our, like, talking past each other even holds a fucking candle Dude, to, to I, you I, two. I don't know. I don't know what it is. What are you doing, Steven? Are you, like, playing a game or something? Are you, are you factorioing? Yeah, you're a lovely person.